67, huh? Oh, what a hit on Dunham by Switowski. I think I made him shit himself. I think he just shit himself. <laughs> DJ Anubis here with you on the Metal Tower Radio Podcast with my co-host of Poetic Carnage, Mr. Edgar Allan Poet. How are you, sir? Thank you for joining me this evening. I, like all days of football, pray to TJ Watt. What's going on, my friend? Thanks for having me. Let's have a great show. Definitely, definitely. And this one's like kind of a special occasion. We what we kind of brainstormed or what we wanted to talk about. I mean, there's always so much to talk about in the sports world, but football season's clearly underway, uh, full swing. A lot of different things going on this year already. You know, Aaron Rodgers goes down at the beginning of the year, <laughs> changes the dynamic of the Jets. Uh, oh, it's it, not as good as we thought they might be. and As so good on. as I thought they might be. Um... No, I can't brag because real quick, if we're talking about stuff that we've covered, uh, I was the kiss of death for the Packers. They looked beautiful, and then I apparently murdered them. Um, I, uh, I, I, I cursed Justin Fields. I mean, the Bears cursed Justin Fields, but um, there's a lot. We we're gonna have to do a pick where we we have to atone for our some of our shitty sins, but. Uh, it's been a great year. Um, I think the other main story is the Niners and the Cowboys can't figure out how good they actually are. Uh, Philadelphia slowly gets better, frustratingly gets better. Uh, the Chiefs are amazing until they're not, and then they're amazing. So there's uh, the Bengals. They were dead until they're not. Um, yeah. There's a, there's a lot going on. Tuna, Tua stayed healthy. Uh, you know, uh, It's been a weird season. Defense is up this year. Red zone offense has been struggling. Um, you're seeing, from my memory, a lot of defenses doing better on scoring defense than in years past. This feels like a season where the defenses are starting to adjust a little bit to the rule changes and whatnot. And it's uh, been beneficial to us because uh, Steelers have the worst offense ever. So, yeah, that is basically the football season in a nutshell. Uh, other than uh, I think that, you know, what we have here is a list of quarterback rankings. And since we're in the middle of the season 
and we could do the typical topics like who's MVP, DPOY, all that stuff. We can always we can always get to those. We can always do our rehashing of predictions and covering our fuck ups and our our triumphs as well. But sometimes you just got to talk about the quarterback. Yeah, and I'm here to talk about the quarterback. And uh, you and I agreed we're going to start from number 32 on make our way to number one. Um, Absolutely. We'll probably have some similar takes here and there. But uh, overall, I think it might be a little bit different also. Um, There's just a lot of different things that we're taking into account. Uh, Potential, uh, how they're playing. Like really kind of just focusing on this year. Like you can say back and forth about what they've done in the past, but I think we're really just kind of seeing how they play this year. Yeah. Under quarterbacks, you know. Yeah, and I, I think the the other thing is, to, to that point, I, I do factor in, like, past performance and, and whatnot, and I always will, but I have dialed it back a little bit more than I normally do um, for this one. Now, I will say – um, that my analysis of where people are, some of it is going to be based more off of recent weeks than other weeks, maybe for injuries or the guy got a weapon back or his offensive line's playing better, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but it should be, it should be fun. Um, it, it should be fun. Yeah. I have uh, a lot of the, uh, quarterbacks I have listed in my list. Um, I have their QBR. So that takes effect of some of how I feel about them, but some quarterbacks might have a lower QBR that are higher, but that's probably because of the potential aspect of. What oh, absolutely. Forward. So, oh, and, and in contracts it. too, people, we, cause oh, yeah. what started this was we were having a conversation about how good is a guy versus his contract and what that contract does or doesn't do for a team. And then it just kind of segued into like, well, look, Russ Wilson, if you factor in contract, he's going to be lower than if you just talk about him on the fi- on the field. And like spoiler, I will have Russell Wilson much higher than a lot of people might think that I do or will have him. My mouse just died, so I'm currently plugging it in. So that's also a good omen for the show. Death. <laughs> death, death, death. All right. Well, let's, let's, let's get started with number 32. Um I guess I'll go first. Uh, it's the Raiders uh, with the cross between <laughs> Jimmy Garoppolo as well as Brian Hoyer. Hoyer. Uh, now, I didn't bother getting Hoyer's uh, QBR because the guy's a journeyman, so I don't really have much to say on that as far as, like, you know, he hasn't played that much this year. Most of it's been Jimmy G. But Jimmy G's QBR is 352 and if you haven't been paying attention, for those that are watching this, uh, Josh McDaniels and the GM just got fired yesterday. Uh, so uh, I've been reading rumors that maybe uh, some of it might have to do with the fact that they were leaving Jimmy G in. Like they have a younger guy named McDonald or McConnell in there on their team. So I don't know if any of that's true that, you know, McDaniels was just kind of doing it his way or the highway. Uh, but clearly that sounds uh, like that sounds like him. Yeah. So, it, it, you know, obviously uh, Mark Davis decided that, you know, as he said, uh, he didn't see McDaniel's vision anymore. And I, and, that, and I don't think anyone's surprised. It, and this is the problem with the Raiders for me is they tend to like give out these big contracts. Now I love John Gruden. I do, but there's no way in hell that I would have given him a 10 year contract paying him that kind of money. And that's outside were- of the stuff that went on with the email stuff. Uh, that's, oh, just, yeah. that's just too much of a contract uh, on too much of a, a whiff, like too much of a what if, like, you know, as, as even though he has a great resume with the Buccaneers and everything is like, I don't know. I'm, I, I, that, I, that's too scary for me. <laughs> you know, It was. And they also did it because they needed a star because they're yeah. just opening that stadium. And it, guys, it, gals, it's a bad sign. If your star is your coach, this ain't fucking college basketball. OK, yeah. <laughs> your stars need to be the dudes on the field making fucking plays. And how amazing is it that a guy like Josh McDaniels, who probably likes being a star, goes out and gets a guy and pays Jimmy Garoppolo a lot of money. And a guy who has nothing like even the Garoppolo defenders would have to admit that he's not a star quarterback. Right. Um, and with all those injury issues that he had. It's not a surprise to see his body break down. And it's horrifying that his body broke down at 32 
because he's it's not like he's a a mobile athletic quarterback who's risking life and limb he also got benched and this is a great way to argue for 32 for jimmy garoppolo low upside Mm -hmm. got benched antonio pierce the new coach said he's done it's it's aiden he said it's aiden's team going forward that like i don't think garoppolo is going to come back that's how bad this guy was and that's the guy that he targeted he being josh mcdaniels so it's you might be like, well, why are they spending so much time talking about Josh McDaniels or talking about quarterbacks? Well, in the world of Josh McDaniels, he is the quarterback, and the quarterback is a reflection of him. <laughs> you didn't pay attention to what he did in Denver. You'll Denver, know he did it again. <laughs> he did it again. I don't need Darren Waller. I don't really want to pay Josh Jacobs, and I understand not paying a running back, but the yeah. Colts – and the Giants both kind of found out to different levels that when your team is dependent upon a running back, as, you know, especially with the Colts because they have a young guy, you have to sign them. So some of those guys have more value to their team than other running backs would. And that's what Josh Jacobs brought to the Raiders because he right. was it's a large part of their offense. It's a weird offense. dynamic there because yeah. think about it. You get Devontae Adams yep. because he has a good pass relationship with Derek Carr. They used to be teammates. Yep, but they were electric run, last year together. You run Derek out of town. Then you replace him. I think they thought they were honestly going to get Rodgers. I think they honestly thought they were going to do that. Yeah. So that, you had to settle for Jimmy G. But at that point, if you're not getting Rodgers, I'm like, well, give me a guy that at least has some upside. Give me Trey Lance. I will take a chance on that kid before I take a chance on Jimmy G. But it's like, what are you doing? And so, yeah, they fucked, they fucked up horribly. Yeah. And also – let me ask you this. Do you agree with the notion that Jimmy G – actually, a couple of questions. Do you agree with the notion that Jimmy G is at best a mediocre quarterback? Yeah, he's an average quarterback. Oh, he's an average. Do you agree that with his average game-managing quarterback play that his stats were inflated in San Francisco? Yes. Okay. So do you agree with the typical view of his profile – arm strength is not that great, was getting worse, not super athletic, and had a propensity for some boneheaded turnovers, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you care about any of those, like the game manager and protect protect the game and whatnot, and you have a guy, I don't know if you saw the game, but Devontae Adams literally – he got wide open on deep throws where like he was yeah. like going to go for six, like at two or three times right overthrow him. Yeah. Yeah. And one of them just went clear out of bounds. Yeah. So if you have a guy and Devonte Adams, like he's viewed as a hall of famer, he's viewed as a top three, like Justin Jefferson said, he's, he's still the best wide receiver last year. I'm going to try to take that from him this year. Right. So right. if you have that wide receiver, who just destroys pretty much every fucking cornerback in front of him, and you have a mediocre guy, this is your point about Trey Lance, wouldn't you want to go get some? I don't know anything about Aiden O'Connell. I'd normally wish him the best, but he plays for the Raiders. I hope, you know, I wish him the best. I hope he stays healthy, well, all that I mean, stuff. Yeah, I think at this point they're just trying to see if they got anything at all. In that anything game, but- at all, and if he stinks, then they can tank, right? right. But if you, you would think that you'd go out and get a Trey Lance or you'd go out and you'd get a, a – like the equivalent – like I know Matt Schaub isn't out on the market, but like that's what the Texans did. Schaub was kind of promising in Atlanta, and then they traded for him. Like you think that you would go out and you would get something because McDaniels is in the business of winning now. And so I it's a lot of these things, like we're not really riding that hard on Jimmy G because we both kind of like know who and what Jimmy G is. In many ways, it's not his fucking fault. I mean, he signed the contract, but look, at the end of the day, he is who he is. He also gave him a shit fucking line. You also took away Darren Waller. You also didn't let the running back come <laughs> yeah. in late because you didn't yeah. want to fucking pay yeah. him. You also still have one of the worst defenses in fucking football. You also still call shitty fucking plays. I mean, at the end of the day, this I mean, we could honestly do a whole show about why Josh McDaniels fucking sucks. And his players hate him. Again, surprise. And the thing is, you know, Brian Hoare is no better. He also comes from the same fucking system in New England. They so. love them boys. They love them yep. scrubs. Yep. So that's – it's just – it's bad. And they're, like, at the bottom for me. So who ended up at your number 32? Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson. Um, there's so many reasons. And I'm going to try to keep it brief. Um, one, his contract makes him unplayable. Um, you are never going to get the value from him. 
that you got out of that contract. Two, you traded a lot of fucking picks to get him. So you have less draft capital, and you have to pay him a ton of money. So he's du- du- he's doubly restricting your roster. Okay. Three, he's not a good fucking quarterback anymore. He literally he doesn't move the same. He doesn't make the same decisions. He was always look. He played big boy quarterback. He wasn't like a safe game manager. But he used to. We viewed him as like a top five guy at one point, and he made good choices. He doesn't make good choices. He doesn't make good choices anywhere. But he doesn't make good choices on the fucking field. He was shoving the refs. I don't know how they didn't fucking suspend him for that. That was insane. And um, yeah, that's the really injury. Odd. That's almost yeah, the automatic. In- yeah, I know. The injury drama was is like he's like, I'm gonna come back and play. Then he benches himself. I'm not saying that he's soft. I don't really do that. If I say an athlete is soft, I have you know irrefutable evidence. But then he said, Oh, maybe I was too optimistic, and 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 then the GM said something different, and the head coach said something different. Nobody knows how healthy he is. He, there's reports that he looked great this week in practice, but he said he might not even be able to play against the Cardinals. I don't know if they play the Cardinals this week or next week. Um, he sucks. He 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 is killing their roster. He doesn't make fucking plays. If you uh, and and I think the thing that kills it is he's 28. He should be entering his prime as a quarterback, um, especially from the mental aspect. And I do think that he is still quite a sharp quarterback. I think he understands the game of football quite well. But he should be entering the point where he he is at his physical best and his mental best. And even if he's at his mental best, it doesn't matter. And they gutted their roster to get him. I'm not a Baker Mayfield guy, but if they kept Baker Mayfield, their team would be so much better off. And I know people are going to say, oh, well, that's hindsight. That's hindsight. That's hindsight. That's not hindsight. You had it. You had it. You man. yeah, you had him. And we'll, we'll, and, uh, we'll get to Baker later. But we'll like, get Baker. Baker's going to be an interesting spot for me. But I'll tell you this, just to close on Deshaun Watson. Okay, if only bad teams go after a guy, the Browns are a bad organization. Um, it's like they draft fairly well. Same thing the, with the Raiders. It's the Browns went after. Yep. The Browns went after him. The Panthers went after him. The Falcons went after him. In defense of the Falcons. They the draft fairly really well. <laughs> in defense of the Panthers, there is no defense of the Panthers. They're killing fucking Bryce Young. Any, but anyway, like those are three teams that do not have a great reputation right now. The the the, the Falcons are kind of rebuilding their reputation. Um, those are the three teams that reportedly went after him the hardest. Those are three quarterback desperate teams that are not known for good decision making. And God bless it. If I was the owner of those other two teams and I was looking at the GMs that really wanted him, I'd be a little, I'd be a little freaked out. And so he is a bad quarterback, or at best, he is a mediocre quarterback playing horrible. He has gutted your roster twice over. He is not healthy ever. He does not move the same way. His game is aging like milk. Um, he he doesn't seem to be himself. And on top of all of that. Um, your he put your friend or you put him in a situation where they have to win now. And I would rather take any other quarterback on this list because at least I could. And I have a little light spoiler tw- my 28 through 31, I have the same grades on the guys. I just kind of like threw them down in a random order. I yeah. would take the, all those guys over to Sean Watson. That is how bad that he is. You muted yourself. There Sorry you go. That. Sorry about That's that. That's all right. To you. So uh, at number 31, I have, it's another uh, mixture between two different quarterbacks because there's one that was injured and then another one came in. But you and I talked about the starter of this team the last couple of years. And last year, this is one of the reasons why I picked him to win the division is because he showed so much improvement last year. But then this year, Justin Fields does not look like the same player. And it's a shame because the talent is clearly there. What are you doing on my desk, dude? Go away. Sorry. (laughs) I got crickets running around right now. I'm going to see if I can hold on. This is ridiculous. I'll be right back.
So yeah, my uh, my little cat decided to release the hounds with my my feeder crickets. So <laughs> I want the water, like. All right, so Justin Fields, obviously, uh, he's really struggling right now. I don't know if he's just not, you know, the mechanics are uh, regressing or whatever. But you know, he's his he had like a much higher QBR last year as opposed to this year. Now he's at thirty seven point six. A lot of quarterbacks were in this range, so he's not alone. But uh, there's another guy, undrafted rookie, who plays for the Bears. And uh, granted, it's only a couple games. we got to be realistic here. Uh, but this guy is a little bit higher with 40.9 on QBR. And he's kind of a good story. And there's rumors, the soft rumors, that maybe <laughs> – probably be a huge mistake to try to like run justin out to, to fit this oh they're they're 100 because eber does not like justin fields so um, tyson badgett uh this young man and i got a little bit of footage of him so while we talk uh we'll just check him out real quick but uh yeah you know he comes in he's he's playing pretty well doing all right they're not winning many games still but you know he's a rookie and uh I don't know. I mean, I, Justin Fields has like all the talent in the world, but it, it is, do you think it's more just now because the Bears just don't know how to? Uh, it's. Oh, go him? ahead. Sorry. No, it's all right. I, I think, think it falls more on the organization at this point for not. I, I, at the start of the year, I was really harsh on Justin Fields. And I said, I said, look, we know the line sucks. We can, we can, we know the line sucks. We know that the play calling has been bad. Um, we know that they're not letting you do the things that you do. You know, we know that there are things that everybody will admit is working against you and they shouldn't be, but he was missing guys that were open. He was doing some things I would categorize as very silly on the football field. Right. And so I said, look, it's the same thing with Russ last year. I will grade you. I will grade you about your surroundings. I absolutely care about your surroundings because that's only fair to you, but I will also grade you on what you can control. Right. And so as the season progressed and Fields called out his, his coaches, which I, I didn't like, I think you could call them out in the practice field. I think you could call them out in their, in their office and stuff like that. But it worked because they started letting him do stuff that he was successful at. Um, they had a couple monster games. He looked really good. His QBR was going up. Um, and at the end of the day, he looked like Justin Fields from last year. Then they played some tougher teams because, you know, the, Washington does not have a good defense. They had a good pass rush. Then, then they, they traded uh, Chase Young and Monte Sweat. But at the time, they had a good a pass rush, right? Um, yeah. Secondary was bad. We all saw what happened that Thursday night. You know, J- Justin Fields looked like, looked like Hercules. Um, yeah. I do put more of a blame on the organization for Fields than Fields because – Badgett is more of a traditional quarterback that's very obvious what Eberflus wants. He's an old school defensive guy. I think that's very obvious more what their offensive coordinator wants. And I will I will tell you this. It's not wrong to put Fields here if we're just doing it off this year. I have him much higher. I don't have him very high, but I have him I have him much higher. Um but and it's probably that potential aspect. It, 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 it's the potential. It's not done. It's just no. It's right not. Now. And I and I'm praying. I'm praying that he gets out of Chicago. Like I would love for him to be a Pittsburgh quarterback. I would love for him to play in San Francisco. I'd love for him to go to a a situation that's the exact opposite of the shithole that he is in. But I think the the reason why I bash the Bears so much is that Justin Fields has shown he's mechanically sound. He can throw the ball. He's obviously electric. He's like six foot three and weighs 225 pounds. He's not fragile either. He broke his hand in the pocket. Like if, right. I feel bad for mobile quarterbacks who get hurt in the pocket because it feels like it's some like cosmic sin that like it, it shouldn't happen. I think the biggest issue, if I had to put something on Justin Fields' is plate, is this. At a certain point, if you know your coordinator is a clown and you know your head coach is a clown, and make no mistake, they will both be fired at the end of this year. And uh, I don't think their offensive coordinator is going to get hired anywhere. I think it's going to be like Scangrella where it's back 
you're going to be assistant coach and then back to college. Hopefully that happens in Matt Canada. At a certain point, Fields just has to be like, fuck it. Like, hey, boys, you know the, you know the time that we the, pl- the play breaks down and I run around, you guys get open, we do tight shit? We're doing that all the fucking time. Like, because these boys is ass. Like, cut the coach's ass, the coordinator's is ass. Let's just do what we can fucking do. Yeah, exactly. And at the end of the day, I think it's really telling that a bunch of pundits who typically don't like mobile quarterbacks are defending Justin Fields. Because you have people asking, like, is this the worst sabotage job ever? Um, and I want to I – want, I, I'll close with this. I think that one of the reasons why Justin Fields still has hope and still has people who are interested in him, you can draw a parallel to Marcus Mariota where they didn't exactly put him in a position to succeed in um, Tennessee, and then teams wanted to find out. Teams wanted to find out about guys like Jeff Garcia, about other guys who were talented, looked good at times, kind of fell off. The, the, the book is still open. And because I think they're going to draft a quarterback so they can ruin another supreme talent, um, I think they're going to probably try to trade him. Please trade him. Please. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're not really happy with him, at least because he's still got some worth. So I mean, just go out and try to get what you can for him. Absolutely. Because uh, there's plenty of teams that would love to give him a shot, you know. And even, you know, God forbid, I mean, Washington may still be a contender for that. So you, you never know. Uh, I like Howell. They need the, it would be great no, if they could Howell, stop Howell from him, getting killed. Yeah, I have Howell up on my list a bit. So uh but you know the story's not done with him either. So it's just one of those things. So 31, who do you got? Um so that was 31, my 31. Um which, right cuz I went yours? Oh wait, no no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You I'm fucking tired. Um so <laughs> He's I have tired. He's I'm tired. already I'm al- I'm already I'm already tired. Um, I have Ryan Tannehill because this 28 through 31 are going to be guys who have lost their job and will probably never start again as a full-time established starter. So I'm going to put Ryan Tannehill in there. I'll be very brief. He was always a game manager. He had one excellent season in Miami. Um, in his defense, he has played through injuries. He stabilized that franchise. They had some postseason success. But he's just not a natural quarterback. No, he, he has hasn't the same he, problem that uh, Jimmy G does. Like they it, can, they can kind of quarterback the ship, but like with there's Garoppolo nothing special, and Tanner, right? You know, you had Derrick Henry who was carrying the load. I mean, right? Was, and when Derrick Henry stopped, that's when <laughs> would fail. So, and yeah. look how good AJ Brown has looked since he now with the Eagles. Like, wow, he was he's he's wide open, guys. He's been open. The ball wasn't getting there. He's he's been open. Um, Tannehill, he look, he had a nice run. I'm not saying that in his prime, I would view him as the 31st guy. I view him today in the league as the 31st guy. He lost his job. Lev, it's Levis's team. Maybe it'll be Willis's team. Um, but anyway, they, he lost his job. They have Malik Willis, Will Levis. They have some talented guys to see what they can do. Their season's over. They just traded their best safety, I think, two weeks ago. Um, surprised they didn't trade Derrick Henry. They're rebuilding now, and and Tannehill he was awful this year. He looks shot, and at the end of the day, when you're physically declining and you weren't all that great when it was kind of a reach to take you in the first round anyway, and you're beat up, and it's not like he hasn't been well protected throughout his time. Tennessee usually had a good offensive line. It's just I look at him and it's like it's over. It's over. It's just over. Maybe over. he can no, rekindle it. Maybe he can be a veteran for a year, get another job like Joe Flacco or something. But right now for him as a starting quarterback today, if he was completely healthy, they would still start Levis. He lost his job. That's where he's at. Yeah, no, Daniel can't go forward anymore thinking he's a starting quarterback in the league. He's just not. At least know. there. He, right. He's going to get a chance. He, he maybe, and well, I hope I he does because he's a really he's nice guy. I don't. Yeah, he's nice, but I don't think he's got what it takes. Like people got enough film on him. I would say, dude, you had Derrick Henry, and you still didn't get to the golden. I uh, God bless it. I I agree, brother. But it, we have seen guys. I try to be optim. I try to be optimistic and and kind to the athletes. Right. Right. There. If he if he 
backs up somebody in a year, gets a job as a spot starter and plays them back w- into it. That is a story that we've seen before. It wouldn't be a shocker. It's just unlikely. But we wouldn't right. be like, oh, my God. It wouldn't be like a Doug Flutie crazy story, right? But, right. yeah, he's cooked. He's fucking cooked. But I'm trying to not be a, a slash and burn guy. No, I hear you. All right. My number 30 is another split. Like most of my early ones will be split uh, outside of maybe mm-hmm. one. But uh, this is one where you have potential versus veteranship, but he's playing his best right now, which is odd. Mm-hmm. And that is a cross between Anthony Richardson and Gardner Minshew for the NFL. Mm-hmm. Now, Richardson, he's a rookie, hurt right now. Uh, Out for the year. Oh, he's Sucks. out for the year. Yeah, he's out. He's out for the entire year. He has to have okay. that AC shoulder injury. So he was before that. He was doing about a forty-seven point six QBR, which is not great. But he's a rookie, so we kind of give that a slide. Now for Gardner, who's been a traveling agent uh, himself, uh, he's playing his best with the Colts at sixty-four point seven. Uh, that's not to say I have much faith in him. That's why he's where he had on my list. <laughs> We've seen I'm this not, story before. Yeah. I'm not trusting. I'm not trusting this to go uh, any further than what's going to go. Uh, but kudos to him, man. Like he's still getting some work. Um, but I think it is more of a system there in, in Indianapolis that's kind of benefiting him. Which you know, let's face it. If you're a quarterback, you want a good supporting cast. And for a lot of great quarterbacks, they have a great supporting cast. So it's important. So I'm not saying it's not. Yeah, but, yeah, we, yeah. but we've seen moments where Gardner was supposed to be the guy in Jacksonville or Tampa or whatever. And just he couldn't do anything with it. So here he is. He's in Indianapolis. So maybe he can help them get into the playoffs, maybe a wild card if he plays good enough. But, uh, yeah, right now, that's who I got. I think Anthony is the future of that team. He was looking great before the injury. But that's the thing you brought up uh, with some of these quarterbacks is can they stay healthy? And, and the more you run uh, and try to be that Michael Vickish type guy, the more you're you to take Yeah, they, they have to. I understand you can't slide every play. I right. understand. I understand if the game's on the line, we're going to do some risky shit. Um there's a time and a place for everything. Also, he's a youngster, so he's going to play the reckless abandon. He's built like a brick shit house, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. it's um I think the the best thing about him watching him play early on other than the fact that he's fun and entertaining and that god that matters so much. We yeah. spent too many years watching Case Keenum's. <laughs> like I need it's nice to see somebody who is exciting to play. Uh you know, the dude you- it- did you watch just a sidetrack? Did you watch yeah. when um, any of the highlights when the Vikings lost Cousins? Yeah, the, com- the commentator was like, "Well, I guess I can go out and sign Keenum. He's familiar with the system." Like, please don't, please don't. <laughs> yeah, no, please don't. Let a young, let care. a young man shine. Let right. a young man shine. No Anything more. Like Case Keenum, please. Anything but that. Let it. Their season is done. Let a young man shine. The tra- there are so many guys. Maybe look. Maybe they don't have a great arm. Maybe their arm's just good. Maybe they're shorter than you want. Maybe they're athletic. But maybe like there are guys who never get a real shot who have NFL fucking talent, right? right. Like I'm speaking to guys who are rough around the edges. But like fuck, man. And I mean this totally sincerely. I would rather. I would rather grab somebody like slaughter you know the magic arm but he can't really do anything else and throw right. him out there and see if i can get lightning in a in, in the or lightning in a bottle right okay. then then trot out case fucking key case keenum has terrorized enough wide receivers and television audiences no more no more keenum no more hoyers no more fucking uh garoppolo's no more you have to have, be able to throw the ball with X amount of velocity to play in the fucking league. It should be a goddamn law. Congress, pass it now. I mean, you guys can't pass anything, but pass it now. Like, no more. No more Keenum. We riot. We riot. Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, who do you got at 30? Uh, Jimmy G. Um, the, the reason, for the, all the reasons that we talked about, the, the reason why I have him at, <laughs> have him slightly higher is because I get like I look at I look at him 
and I go, his contract's bad, but you didn't have to trade for him, so he's unplayable. And Deshaun Watson is better on the field, but not by that much. And I look at Tannehill, and I go, like, he's physically cooked, and Jimmy G is getting cooked. But I think someone can talk Jimmy G or can talk themselves into Jimmy G being a spot starter, or if he has to play his way back to a, a position, I think that he would start higher on the ladder than Tannehill. That's it. I mean, we're, we're, we're picking nits at this point. Right, right, right. All right. Well, 29, similar to you. Um, I have Mr. Deshaun Watson slash PJ Walker. Now, the most interesting thing about this, and I asked you like the last time I think about this, either it was off, off screen or was on the episode or whatever, but Deshaun's QBR is like 41.3, which is about the average for these subpar quarterback play, right? Yeah. Now. PJ Walker's is 22.7. That's dreadful. Oh, he's, but, he's quite bad. But they seem to play better as a collective under Walker. And maybe it's because Walker's a little more uh, athletic and runs around a bit more. That's something Watson used to do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's, it's really weird. Like, now you say to yourself, okay, Walker may not be our future here. But I would almost – like find a way I could get out of that Deshaun Watson contract any way I could. You can't. It's yeah. it's they're dead. They're yeah, dead it, to it. And that's the thing. It sucks. And now you look at it like, man, we could have saved ourselves all that money so, and still went through the growing pains with this. Anything. 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 You could have spent that draft capital and like literally. Okay, let's say they. Sp it's it. I'm changing the timeline. Like I know that this doesn't work, but I'm just it, it's it's an example that can happen. Okay, they could have given up that type of capital and traded up to get a Trey Lance. Okay, and let's say Trey Lance is fucking horrible, like clown shoes bad. They would be like, oh, we've seen this before. At we've least drafted. You're trying. At least you're yeah, trying, exactly. Right? And we didn't have to give him two hundred million dollars. That's Karen fucking teed. Like to, uh, the the Browns fans are so inundated with bad quarterback play. I can like, almost we, forgive it if he didn't have to sit for a fucking year because of an off field incident like that. Right. He, that right he, off the bat is like a red flag. I'm like, why he, am I doing this? It's like his, he demanded the trade and then he benched himself. And then you had like the eight weeks and it should have been more the oh, real fun fact for the, for the fans. The reason why the NFL tried to suspend him for 12 games or a full season. I can't remember which it went to the arbiter who used to be a federal judge. The reason why she overturned it was, is that it was a, a an offense that was incongruent with past punishments. People are like, well, what past punishment? It was Robert Kraft getting the special hand jobs down in Miami. He was doing illegal sexual shit right. um, and was vindicated in court for other different uh, legal reasons, but he only got four games. So the judge fairly said in this compare and contrast, he got four and he's an owner. <laughs> and this is a guy who hasn't even been criminally charged, at least that guy was. So, you know, they had a grand jury, but that doesn't count the same as being charged. Uh, that's how he ended up at fucking eight. So you have all the baggage with him, to your point. You have the fact that his contract and the draft picks are what they are. You have the fact that he's not playing well. And you just have the fact that, like, the difference at a certain point, I know you're a QBR guy. At a certain point, we all know QBR is imperfect, and it's the difference between a guy with a 20 and a guy with a 30. It's like the difference between getting an F with like a 40% and somebody getting an F with a 48%. It's like your ass, you're unfucking playable. Um, Deshaun in a perfect, Watson. In a perfect had, world for the Browns, like the perfect yeah. world. Would Deshaun would like find some character and say, you know what? <laughs> I'm not playing like a $200 million dude. So I am going to rework my contract so that we can get more talent in here. That's what a good character guy would do. I know it's, I know it's not realistic. And I yeah. know that from a player perspective, you'd be dumb to do it because you're there to make money. Yeah. But it's I would business. not feel right. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just you. But I used to play football in high school. I wasn't like an amazing athlete, but I enjoyed the game. And I know these guys do on some level, but it's like at some point, you're going to have to want to win. Like, why would you yeah. take all that money just to be sucky? Like, it just makes no sense. Well, this is true, but you're also 
not a rapist, right? So well, that you know, too. I mean, yeah, that which I appreciate, but no, no, I <laughs> yeah. know, but I'm just saying, I like, it, and too. it's and 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 with and with uh, for the audience, I know you also feel the same way about teens. It's like, wow, holy fuck, this guy is making peanuts and he is carrying our team. It would not be in our financial best interest to give him what he's worth. But like, you know, the running back discussion where we're like, it sucks. It sucks that these guys are so good and they carry literally the team so much, but they're getting paid this. So it's not like you're just wanting that for a player, you know, the player on the player's end. Uh, if all the owners, since almost all the owners are billionaires these days anyway, maybe we don't need a salary cap, right? That would be, that would be one thing too. I'm, I say that tongue in cheek, but yeah, man, he's just, it's hopeless because they're four and three right now. Um, they're not getting past eight wins and I don't believe like their defense is really good. I don't yeah. believe in the, through five weeks, they're the best. To waste. To waste. Yeah. Their defense is going to waste. Um, you know, you, you might've been able to, cause they are a lot better than I thought they were going to be. I think I put them at four wins. I don't think they're getting past seven. I think they're going to be like the nastiest seven win team well, ever. The, the, the walls are going to cave in eventually. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, it's just, it is what it is. And, but fuck them because they're Cleveland. They did dumb shit. So <laughs> yeah, keep screwing yourselves. Uh, that's your yeah. baggage. All right. 29. Who you got? Desmond Ritter. Oh. I was wrong. Oof. Um, he's had a couple of nice clutch moments. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, he's been really bad. Um, he's a great kid. I loved rooting for him in college. I thought he should have been a first round draft pick. I thought he had a first round talent. Um, I still do, but I understand better now why he went where he did. He's just not good. I'm not going to pile well, on him. He lost a it. long shot. You know, people. It, you know, it, it funny it, because yeah. I'm just going to use this example because I know you love to bust me on it. Uh, for those that didn't pay attention to last year when I was pumping TCU the entire year, uh, I was right, but I also wrong, which I kind of knew coming to Georgia it was going to be a, a not so pretty moment. Yeah. Year. But Desmond Ritter and the, the Bearcats, you know, they got to the playoffs, which is a great thing for Cincinnati, uh, a university. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they, like everyone else, they meet the real team of the fucking playoffs and they get their ass whooped. And that's what happens. And so yeah, we can sit there and say, oh, Desmond Ritter, you look great, man. You, you're doing good, having a great year with the Bearcats. But it's like you got to keep it on a realistic and yeah, level and he, the minute you sit there and say this is the whole Paxton Lynch thing, Wave used to say this all the time about Paxton was great at Memphis, man. He put up a lot of records. I'm like, it's Memphis, okay? We got to keep it in perspective, dude. He's not doing this at Alabama or Texas, or anything right? Like that, you know. And with and with Ritter, what made it? He got to Al- he got to the play. I believe it was Alabama. Mm-hmm. And they were they had a couple of nice drives and they couldn't finish it out. And then the walls, like you said, kind of close around in on him. Yeah. What made me feel decent about Ritter was his measurables were good. The arm strength was good. The the the, the physical well, I, traits I very were much good. Happy about that. That's why I got him actually a little higher on my list. Higher. Yeah. It's just he he's benched. I don't think he's getting his job back. Who's I a, think who, who took over for him? I honestly I don't recall off the top of All my right, head. Um. Yeah, and it's and it's. I think the reason why, one of the reasons is he, why, is he, just, is he uh, disgruntled? Is it is he doing something bad? Like no, he's just he's just not. He's just playing horrible. I mean, there's no there's no nice way to do it now. If if you wanted me to like argue on his behalf, they run the ball so much, it's probably hard to get in rhythm. They have Drake London, they have Kyle Pitts, they have all these guys who are super talented, and they run the ball probably a little too much. I know they have a defense; they want to run the ball. It's a bad division, all that stuff. I do it's think it would be a Heineken. tough. Sp- oh, Jets, right? Yeah. So there, but and then and then that would be the other. He argument. didn't look bad well, though. He didn't look he's bad. Str- hey, he's struggling. Heineke, he's kind of a scrappy. He can game manage. Maybe we can get more out of him. But there's just no way to put it. I can like a guy. I, I'm not going to sit here and say he's going to be out of the league. Right. He's got to play better when he gets his next chance. He's right. still on a rookie contract, so that's desirable. But he is he has played poorly enough 
to lose his job. I don't know if I would yank him for Heineke, but that's a different conversation. Well, I, I think you're right. I think this is just, he needs to take this as a learning experience and just like say, okay, yeah, I wasn't playing well. That's fair. You know, so you got a veteran in there who is average. He's another Jimmy G out there. Maybe not quite as good as Jimmy G, but he he's going to, you can just sit there and say, I'm going to get my job back because I know I can beat this guy. That's basically Yeah, and I know I'm more gifted than him. And then, look, Heineke, is, he's like Minshew. He's up and down, up and down. Heineke ain't a full-time starter for a reason either. But when you lose your job, you probably suck. And my guy sucks. I like Ritter, but it just it is what it is. Yeah. All right, number 28 for me. Uh, it's probably way lower for you uh, than you have is uh, – and you just inform me he's now a Viking as Joshua Dodds for the Cardinals. Um, Dodds spent a long time in Pittsburgh as a backup, which, you know, fit the, the mold of the offense there at the time. And so uh, Arizona, he's played admirable. Like, he's done all right. Uh, nothing bad really to say about him. Um, I think he's actually going to help keep Minnesota afloat, which is good. That's actually a great trade on their part. Um but I don't think he's ever going to be like a bona fide starter. Like I just don't see him ever getting that role. Uh, he'll be better than the Jimmy G's and the Taylor Heineke's and all that. But uh, he's just, he's always going to be a backup in my opinion. So. Yeah. Um, I have, uh, I have Dobbs at 23. Okay. Um, so uh, talk what, about I, what I, yeah, I'll talk about him when he get there. But what I will say is I, I agree with pretty much everything that you said. I'm just slicing things slightly different. Right. Um, my last guy for who falls into the, I have to have you here because you lost your job or you will not be a starter next year is Mac Jones. Um, Mac Jones should never have been a first round draft pick. Mac Jones was never good. He, as a rookie, he played with the training wheels on. He did not hit big time throws. Well, that's, that's kind of like that whole, um, polar opposite of what I just said about Ritter. Like Ritter goes to Cincinnati to get to the playoffs and everybody thinks that this quarterback's like, you know, a must have. Whereas right. Mac Jones goes to Bama, I think, and ends up, you know, he's on like as you would call it, the dynasty superpower that is the Bama yeah. type. And so like everyone thinks every quarterback that comes out of there is going to be this great thing and they're not. No, uh, they're they're you can they're see not easily why Again, Jones is a Jimmy G castle. He's all in that mold. They, they love that shit. They yep. love that. They, they love Mac Jones so much they draft him again with Zappy. The exactly. exact same fucking guy. The exact same fucking guy. And, and they uh, can't make up much mind what they want to they, do. Right. You might as well just cut Mac because or get rid of Mac because Zappy's younger. So, in, anyway, he was never good. It was always fool's gold. He turned he's turned into a turnover machine. He's a dirty player with the, the, all the stuff with his cleats and hitting guys and the junk. Um, he also just – there's no other way to put it. On top of just being a bad quarterback, I cannot imagine being a grown man in a locker room and looking at Mac Jones and being like, yep, that's my leader. There's just no way. He looks like he's 12. He doesn't give off mature vibes when, like, I see him with. I don't say he's like Zach L Wilson levels of immature, but when he does press conferences, he kind of seems like an airhead. Like, I mean, he just. I'm not saying the man's like a, a a blithering idiot, but like I listen to him talk, and I'm like, I don't think you realize how bad you are. I don't think you realize how bad you're playing, and I don't think you realize how bad your offense is, and it's. You throw a lot you know, of pick sixes, that's bro. Why, that's probably why Belichick likes him because, you know, here was the thing. Brady was a smart guy. Uh, yeah. And so Brady knew that he was a big reason why the Patriots were successful, even though a lot of people tried to discredit yeah. him. Whereas Belichick's like, I just don't want to deal with Brady because, like, I, I'm, I'm almost positive that was part of the problem down the line is that they were butting heads about what should yeah. be done. And you, you talked about before where – the Patriots were just were not helping Brady at all for a long time. Like, what could it drove take me insane? Great receiver, you know what I'm saying? So, here he's got quarterbacks, a couple of quarterbacks that he doesn't have to get any lip from because they haven't done anything. No, I, I I will push back only slightly because Bill Belichick hates quarterbacks who turn the ball over, and so I think ideally he wants a guy who is a game manager. And Mac Jones can't even do that. 
mm-hmm. and he doesn't have to share any credit with because I do think it came down to arrogance. And you know, for Belichick, he's probably like, hey, that last Super Bowl that we won, you remember when we stifled the Rams offense with our defense and we just ran the ball 35 times and you barely threw the ball? Yeah, you're welcome. And Tom Brady is like, hey, you remember all those games that I won when I was throwing the fucking janitors? Fuck you, Bill. Like, it's, it's like, why don't you, why don't you sit on it and spin, you old fucking badger? And so, exactly. like, uh, I, like, I get it. Uh, I, I uh, for the first half of the dynasty, it was more Belichick. For the second right. half of the dynasty, it was more Brady. During right. the whole dynasty, except for maybe the first Super Bowl, they were both really fucking important. And yeah. so it was just Kraft just had to be like, okay, look, we can't draft wide receivers. Uh, I, I hated it when they got Brandon Cooks and then they got rid of him because, like, oh, he's really good, but we're not going to fucking trade for him. We could do a whole fu- – maybe we should. Maybe we should do a podcast chronicling the history of Tom Brady and Bill Belichick and then talk about why we have him in different places for our GOAT conversation. Okay. Maybe maybe, maybe we might save that for the future offseason because that's good offseason. Yeah. yeah, that's a future – future. Fu- we're just talking out loud. We're just talking out loud. But, yeah, man, Mac Jones, fucking horrible – um, dirty player, no reason for him, no reason for him. I probably, you know what? I fuck it. I'm swapping him with Tannehill because at one, at least one time I watched Tannehill hit good deep passes oh, back to back. I'm swapping him. Murder. I'm swapping him with Tannehill. <laughs> fuck you, Max. It's a character issue here, folks. <laughs> fucking All throw right. a deep pass, asshole. Number 27. <laughs> and like, you know, we talked about a little bit off air. Jets fans were just overly pissed the minute Rodgers went down in game one. Like, he didn't even play, like, a couple series, I think. He's just done. Uh, but I, I have I, I didn't bother with the QBR because just Rodgers never did anything. So it's now yeah. Zach Wilson's show. Uh, we've seen this before. Um, I still have Zach up. I don't hate Zach as much as many people do. Um, he's still not. We're going to talk over. about that. Yeah. Uh, but he's doing about a 36.7. So he's lowered in a few of the other ones I have lower, but I always I like that he's younger and you know, maybe he can learn. Maybe he needs a new scenery. I don't know. Uh but you know, he's hit he's hit or miss, obviously. Uh, sometimes Zach will show up and sometimes he won't. Most times he doesn't. Uh but compared to some of the other guys, like you know, I mean I could pretty much swap out anybody here and there. You know, if I said Justin Fields is like ten times the player that Zach is, but Again, we're talking about where we are now, right now, this season. Right. And, uh, so it's just kind of – it's a wash. Like, you really, for me, from 23 or maybe 22 on down, it could be anybody – can be anywhere. There okay. is – yeah, it gets real – it gets real subjective. And right. I, I think that it's also going to come down to what is my interpretation of, of the head coach, the support that he gets versus yours might be what swings it, right? Mm-hmm. So for, for me, I have Bryce Young here. I have I have a very strategic reason for why he is here. He has okay. obviously not say, played so poorly that he should lose his job, but he's playing horribly. I don't know if if most of it's on him. He has an offensive line that is really bad. It's I think the last time I checked, the only line that was worse than, was Washington, and Washington's getting our boy Howell absolutely killed. He uh, two weeks ago, I don't know if it's still true, Howell was on track to get sacked the most in NFL history which is horrifying, right. Um, right? So with Bryce Young, I simply have him here to signify the production is horrible, the supporting cast, other than Thielen. Thielen's been really good, um, oddly enough, is horrible. I don't like what they did with uh, the offensive line for the guy, um, and he's just playing bad poorly. He's just kind of at the bottom of the tier of production, so it makes sense for him to hit that level of, I have not played so bad that I should lose my job, but oh my God, I'm on fire. Why is there not water? So that's why I got him at 27. Um, it's fair. I still believe in him too. I still, I was a Bryce Young guy. I like Stroud. I liked Young more. I was it's probably, probably wrong why on that I have one. him a little higher because, like, you yeah, know, there's that potential. That's right. There. And the potential, yeah, the potential is great. Like, let's be honest. If they're going to trade him, if they said Bryce Young is open for trading, they'd have suitors. Oh, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Pending a physical. Uh, 26 is uh your 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 big guy mac jones um <laughs> you know th- again it's more belichick more the patriot system that the, the patriots are even competitive at all but mac jones does what he's told and he you know without when he except for anybody screws up and makes a tenor turnover here and there but <laughs> reality wise like 
you know, again, it's just more mishmash. Like I could throw him at the very end if I wanted to, or I can keep him where he is. And right now, you could defend him. You could say, well, his, his second year, he had a defensive guy as an offensive coordinator. You could say that he doesn't have good water. You could absolutely defend him. But here's the thing. I don't think you and I are buying that shit. So he is where he is. He <laughs> yeah, is where in, he in is. The end, in the end, he's where he is. We put him where we put him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who do you got at 26? Kenny Pickett. Um, mm. I got to be, I got to, I got to be fair. I got to be fair. I got to oh. be fair. Yeah, I got to be fair. You've always, one of the things you've always loved about me is I try to be fair and I try well, to be objective. I give you a lot of credit because looking at the QBRs for all the QBs, and like, like bad, I said, in my list, it's moving around, but for him, it's a dreadful. He's down like around it's bad. 30. He is dreadful. Oh, yeah. And he, I, I've seen every Steeler game. I've seen all but seven snaps because daddy had to take a shit at halftime. But let me tell you something. He's been bad. Matt, we've heard – you know what I think about Canada. Mike Tomlin will not start Broderick Jones at, at left tackle. He has outplayed uh, our fucking scrub guy because he got hurt for a while. He won't start him. We're, so we're not putting the best offensive line out for them. Matt Canada is getting booed and cheered. He's getting – his name gets booed, and they cheer for him to get cut at Pittsburgh Penguin games. Okay? So we obviously know there's been some stuff that's worked against him. But he's missing throws that are right there. He is only good in the clutch. And I know that sounds like a thing to criticize him. But when you do nothing for three quarters and then you go ham at the end, you saying somebody's Tebow-esque, it's fun, but it's not a way to win football games. He's fucking – man, I just got to be honest. He's, he's regressed. There are certain things that he can control that he's doing a worse job this year than last year. And at the end of the day, you know, I could argue, I could definitely use that. I could, I thought about like how high could I get him as a thought experiment. And if I stretched everything and I was a bit of a homer, I could get him the 20, like with making excuses and stuff. But I was like, where do That's I think exactly he is? exactly where I have him. Where, where could I get him? And yeah. I was like, I th honestly think. It's got to be 26. And so that's that's where I put him. And look, I and honestly, that's if he wasn't fair, so man. tough, like, if he wasn't so tough, year, yeah, this he's, year. He, yeah, and, and 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 what he, he has around him. So he didn't have Deontay Johnson, and Fryermuth has been hurt. But Jalen Warren's pretty good. Najee Harris needs to lose some weight from a player standpoint. Um, yeah. But Pickens is an animal. Like, they have some guys out there. And he's just – he's missing too many throws. That's really what it comes down to. He's missing too many throws. The mental game hasn't developed. He's taken some horrible sacks. And he's throwing some mind-numbing picks. And if he wasn't so tough and he wasn't so clutch, and if he wasn't a guy that kind of embodied what being a Steeler is all about, he'd be lower. At 26, I'm sorry, Kenny. I love you. I don't know – I can no longer say that I believe in you. Um, at this point, it's an open-ended question. I'm turning towards thinking he's not the guy. I just got to be honest. As much as I don't want to say that for so many obvious well, you reasons, know what I mean. he I, I, he's I the guy. Love I loved him coming out of college. So I had a first-round grade on him. Yeah. I had a first-round grade on him. But it's still early, man. It's still early. We can – I mean, we can, we'll can. we see where it goes. We'll see where it goes. I'll, I'll change his mind before the end of this. We'll see where <laughs> it watch, goes. I watch Kenny go out and have the best game of his life tonight. I'm, uh, that would be – I'll take credit for motivating him because he clearly <laughs> watches – he loves poetic. Kenny Pickett, confirmed poetic Carnage fan. Yeah. Uh, 25. This I struggled with a bit because I know the player, not personally, but just know him through – he's been in the league a while. Uh backup but he had starter roles as well with uh buffalo bills and ravens for a little bit and that's tyrod Ty yep. yeah so he he's got some aspects about his game that are very lamar like and stuff like that but he's at a 40.2 right now which you know he's only played like two or three games so i, I think uh daniel jones is hurt or something or maybe benched i can't remember which. he hurt his neck yeah, <laughs> after getting but hit like I, I that, I think that Daniel man. Jones' days are pretty much numbered too. I think he's about done. But what a horrible contract! Yeah, fucking horrible contract. But yeah, Tyrod, Saquon, man, I like shot I him. said, you know, it's another one of those. Hey, you want to put him last? That's fine. I don't care. Um, yeah, I yeah I I for my list, I've gone with Daniel Jones because he's played the majority of the snaps. Yeah. Um, I think um. 
for Tyrod, we've seen him be a good backup. If they cut him, he'll still be a backup in the NFL. Um, he's a guy who is a he's a weak starter, a good spot starter. He did get the Bills to the playoffs. He was named the starter for the Chargers, and then their doctor punctured his lungs, and yeah. that's how the Justin Herbert thing started. So he's not scrub, but like it, it's based off of this year. And let's and and, and we're both fair. That offensive line is fucking horrible. That coach, I used to think Dable was a genius. He is only a coordinator. Um, I went off on him when he started screaming like at, at Tyrod Taylor at that end zone snaffle where he ran the ball and they, they didn't have enough time. It's like, this yeah. is a guy who's coming off the bench. He hasn't played in a hot fucking minute, and you're showing him up on live TV so we know that it's not your fault. You're yeah. a scrub coach. So he's yeah. not exact. And the, the, the Giants haven't had a good fucking wide receiver since fucking Amani Toomer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or OG, actually ODB. O- it wasn't O-D-B. quite that long. Yeah. ODB. ODB. So uh, who do you got at number 25? Zach Wilson. Um, okay. I, yeah, I, have a, I have a lot of good things to say about Zach Wilson. I was probably one of his harshest critics last year. Um. I never thought I'd be defending the guy. I loathed his attitude and his personality last year. I didn't like the MILF Hunter stuff. I didn't like the lack of accountability in the press conference. I don't like the turnovers. I didn't like him in the draft. I thought he was a third or fourth round pick. I don't think his arm's that great. I think he has a good arm. I think people say he has a great arm. He's not all that athletic. He's small, and I don't like small quarterbacks by and large. With all that being said, this man has matured. He's He's weathered the criticism. He's gotten too much blame for some of the losses. Because let's be honest, that line is still bad. They only have a wide receiver. They only have a running back. Now, those two are quite good. No one knows who their tight end is. But this is why I have him higher, other than the fact he had to come in when he and, and replace Aaron Rodgers, right? And he they already hate him in New York. Yeah. Three yeah. weeks ago. Three weeks he was, ago, he was I watched thinking, it. Man, I'm just going to ride Rodgers. I'm going to ride, people. learn, hit the reset button. Let's see. And it, it didn't happen that way. Three weeks ago. I watched this man throw the ball to Alan Lazard right after Lazard negated a huge running play. This is against the Eagles, all right, and then with a, with a holding call. He goes to Lazard like a real quarterback does when someone fucks up. Hey, I believe in you. We're going to get it back and give you a chance. Alan Lazard drops the ball because he's a fucking scrub, and he's never been good. I don't know why Aaron Rodgers likes him because he sucks. I'm just There's just no way to put it. Alan Lazard is a bad wide receiver. If he ever wasn't a bad wide receiver, it was years ago. Two weeks ago, it might have been last week, Lazard has another boneheaded play. Zach Wilson goes to him again. He drops the ball again. Zach Wilson is doing better in the pressers. He's going back to guys. He's trying to be a leader. He was pretty good against the Chiefs, and I know that fumble. I understand. I'm not saying that he's good, but what I am saying is the Jets offense, Bryce Hall has only been good and healthy recently. He was on a snap count. They only have a wide receiver. They don't have a lot of talent on offense, and that line is bad. He is a subpar quarterback. He is probably going to be a journeyman. He is not a guy that I want on my team, but he is a much better player and a much more mature guy now than he was, and he deserves a 25 spot. And quite frankly, I do think that um, sometimes – and I know p- the people don't want to hear this because the people don't want to admit that they're wrong, but sometimes he does flash that talent that the reason that he's drafted there. And there are some times where it's not him that's screwing up. And at the end of the day, I actually could have put him higher. Uh, I thought 25 I mean, look, was fair. Man, uh, you know, the Jets have been very ineffective for a long time. So to sit there and say that, oh, Zach's the reason why the Jets suck. Well, he might be part of it, but – Think about your history right now. You haven't really been to the big dance in like a long time. Mark Sanchez. Yeah. Mark Sanchez was the last guy. I mean, the closest that I can remember was Vinny Testaverde. Like that was like really the closest that you got against yep. Denver. So I mean, look, it's it, it happens, but uh don't hang it all on like New York's harsh on their quarterbacks all around. They right. sure are. Except for the Giants, when they fell in love with Daniel Jones for some weird, it's like they hated him, but then they wanted to weirdly. The, I don't fucking get it, man. I don't get it. Um, Twenty four. Um, I kind of always felt like this guy was um, fake. Yeah, <laughs> I always heard people talking him up. 
Um, now, granted, he came out of the season because you mentioned it. He came out on fire, looked good. And I thought, oh, maybe this guy does have something. Uh, so for me at number 24 is uh, Mr. Jordan Love of the Packers. Yep. Uh, so I think there's probably still some potential. He's been sitting for a few years, so he should actually technically be better than he is. Um, but I'm not going to write him off just yet. And I don't know. How do you feel about that? That position. Uh, I don't have him much higher than you. Okay. And so what I will what I will say is, um, when you see who I have at twenty four, twenty three, and then him, I'll tell you this: I have him at twenty two. You'll okay. be like, oh, he I be, he basically had him at twenty four slash twenty three slash twenty two, because these are there's going to be a lot of commonality between these next couple guys on my end. Right. Um, for me at twenty four, I have Daniel Jones. Um. Okay. He's a fun quarterback. He's really athletic. He's really fast. He's gotten worse as a passer. I One of the reasons that drives me insane about media is that if you look at Daniel Jones, he's this hyper-mobile quarterback who's a crappy, crappy passer, but he doesn't get blown up for it. Um, I never fucking understood why. His coach is bad. His wide receiver, Sterling Shepard, I thought was good. He keeps getting hurt. Darren Waller is a pretty good tight end but he's had injury issues. This team has never got the ball rolling. I want to be fair to Daniel Jones. I think that he's a weak starter. I think that he's probably a really good backup quarterback. Um, I understand that he took them to the playoffs. I'm not trying to be too much slash and burn, but at the end of the day, he can't fucking pass, man. And if he, I actually thought at watching him last year, okay, you're horrible at throwing the ball, so run more. Like, just lean in. Like, you're not going to play long. You're not going to be what your coach wants, but you will actually be a more effective player. And For that's anybody how I view him. That, uh, I'm too hard on Lamar Jackson. Uh, Daniel Jones is way worse as a pass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because you'll be like, wow, you know, Lamar Jackson, at least he gets hot. He can cook. We've yeah. never said that about Daniel Jones. No. We've no I one's mean, ever been dude, like, whoa, yeah, that boy's cooking. Year, you and I both said it. They were playing the Vikings in Minnesota. Yeah. They said the Giants will win because they're going to run the fucking ball and play great defense. They're not going to beat the shit out of Kirk Cousins. They beat they the shit out of Kirk Cousins. They all over, and that's all they yeah. do. They, Saquon, um, Saquon had a big boy game because that's a big boy running back, but they wouldn't yeah. pay him, but they'll pay their shitty quarterback. Uh, fuck, I felt like I was rapping. So that's Daniel yeah. Jones. I have him at 24 out of respect for his talent. I have him at 24 because I think that he is a little bit better than Zach Wilson. I do think he is a little bit better than Pickett. And his offensive line, like that game week one against Dallas, that was embarrassing. So, look, it just is – it is what it is. I, you know, honestly, anyone from 24 to 32, I think that they should probably lose their jobs. I don't really think <laughs> that they're that great. So, it's just there's there's not a lot of good quarterbacks. Uh, yeah. Who you got at 23? Um, my next two picks are going to be picks that, uh, are definitely based on potential. Okay. Uh, so number 23, we talked a little bit about him as Bryce Young, uh, for the mm-hmm. Panthers. Um, yeah. I do think he's too small. I, 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 you know, look, uh, it's kind of funny because there's a certain someone that talks about that. Oh, we know that Russell Wilson's small and can't stay over the line. So we know this. Well, that's fine that you know it, but it's a problem. Now, yeah. Drew Brees ran into similar issues, and he became a Hall of Famer, but he's not the guy that, like, that's not the standard. Like, you don't want small quarterback. You just don't want them. Now, Bryce is an athletic guy. He's very good. He's fast. He can do different things. And he's a gorgeous thrower of the football. He's He's got but great mechanics. If I'm a coach... I need somebody you can see over the fucking line. Like, I know it sounds sad because you should always want a talented guy there. But I think ultimately that will always be a hindrance for a guy like Bryce Young. Oh, it it absolutely will. You have to get creative with your offensive coordinator. He has to see the lanes. He has to use his mobility well. It's a perfect thing because Drew Brees, and I try to explain this, he he threw through lanes, so he couldn't see over his line, but he knew that his his receiver had to be at a certain spot when he threw. Right. And that's one thing that Drew Brees uh, perfected was his throwing and accuracy, and that's important. 
and it's the shotgun. Like you, there are certain, and I think this is where you and I diverge because I don't disagree with anything you just said. Right. I just think that it's easier to get around it than you do. That mm-hmm. seems to have always been well, our and big I, point of contention. The potential there. Look, you can build yeah. this guy into a great quarterback. Right. Um, but I just, it, it's one of those things. I just kind of a pet peeve with me. Like I, I, I guess if I was a coach or a GM, I wouldn't want to put that kind of work in because I know it's like a long road to get that guy. Yeah. To the um, he would it's have easy, to it's easier really for me to take you. a guy like Lamar Jackson or CJ Stroud and make him into a uh, uh, Donovan McNabb or something like a really, or a Randall Cunningham. I can do that because these yeah. guys can fucking see of the field, yeah. you know, and so it's not that Bryce is a bad guy. You know, you hear uh Buff talk about it all the time. He's a great character guy, very likable. So there's nothing wrong there. He comes in, does his job, he tries hard. Uh, so that's why I kind of have him higher than you did. So, like, it's just based on potential. Yeah, I, I think I had him where I did based off of like my interpretation of the rules of the list more so because if it was just it was there to signify like this is how bad it has to be to hit a certain point. That's okay. Um, <laughs> and so that that's that's where he was. And I did misspoke. I said basically everyone from this spot on down should lose their jobs. I'm not saying Bryce Young should should lose oh, his I, job. I, I, I'm I, just I saying, thought you were just talking from a quarterback standpoint. Yeah, from oh, right. Oh, and, and, oh, oh, excuse me. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, definitely. I mean, their coach oh, – fuck. I, you they can't fire their new head coach in, in year one. But, like – for if, but if I if I view the list a little bit differently, I'd probably have him around that spot because it's like he's got untapped potential. Nothing has gone right, and he's a rookie, and the team's bad. I mean, like that's why it's so funny that Chicago has their pick. Chicago could theoretically end up with the number one and number two overall pick. That's going to be two great players that they whose careers they destroy, but they will have their careers to destroy. Um, So it's we're on twenty three. It's on me, right? Yep. This is where I have Dobbs. Um, this is the twenty three spot. Is where I have is where I would view where I would hope in an ideal world is where you're going to see more of the weak starter but good backup types of guys. Dobbs right. doesn't have great talent. He's not a total scrub. Um, I think that honestly, I do, the, I do the, think he's in a better situation now than he was. In the oh. Game. Oh, yeah, I do too. I, th- I think that there's something to be said for like, hey, one team quit on him, but another team traded for him. There was talk when he left Pittsburgh that he wasn't going to be in the league very long. He's played well enough that he is kind of it, – it's like the Brian Hoyer, Keith Keenum thing. Hey, I had that one decent year or that one decent stretch so I can collect a paycheck for nine more years, right? right. So – Dobbs seeing him be as good as he was in Arizona and having some of those moments, it's nice to see that a, a, a guy who's grinded has made his way. But you know, it, I don't think that I don't think that he's I don't think that he's the real deal in terms as a starter. But if he's my backup and he has to come in for a while, I'm pro- I'm not going to feel like it's hopeless unless I'm playing like I don't fucking know the Cowboys defense or something, right? right. So that's that's why I got him there. And shout out to the former Steeler. Yeah. Yeah. Good for him, man. I mean, I mean, obviously, uh, just from a guy that kind of working his way up, I mean, I hope he has a good career. Yeah. Um, 22. I'm not going to spend a lot of time in this because you and I already kind of talked a little bit about it. I, I did again, potential Desmond Ritter for the Falcons. Yeah. Hot and cold. Uh, he got benched, obviously. So maybe this will be a So you wouldn't have, that's the interesting thing. So you wouldn't have benched him then based off I of where you have him. No, because, you know, here's the thing. You got young quarterbacks, and, you know, it's funny. Uh, obviously, John used to say that he kind of wished that Denver would have kept him on a bench longer. But I'm like, if you look Different at Different era. You know, yeah, well, yeah. And so, like, you know, Manning went out there. He was horrible his first year. But that's how you grow. And so, like, I, and I think that's how you kind of learn by year three what you got. Mm-hmm. And so somewhere along the way, we've kind of – the league has gotten away from that. They've kind of gone around and said, oh, man, if you're not showing me something in five or six games, you're done. Yeah, like, we I, went from three years – it used to be five years in the 70s. Then it went to three years. Now it's a year and a half to two. Right. 
it's almost an instant gratification. Now, I, I know that when you take a, a quarterback in the first round, that you're expecting to see those shining glimpses. Uh, even when Elway kind of like sucked his first year or two. You saw that talent. You saw right. that talent. And so that talent was beautiful. Josh now, Allen. Ritter, Ritter doesn't. Yeah. So Ritter doesn't really have that. Special right. talent. Right. Yeah. But if you're asking me, can he be a good starter in Atlanta? Yeah, I think he can. And so he's, I think- he, yeah, that's, I, I love that response because it's like, okay, so guys like Allen and Newton and Luck and, and, and Elway, right? And Marino. Now, El, Marino's a little bit different than those other guys, but like that level of talent, like that's like that A shit, right? Like that's like the fucking, like the pure cocaine, so to speak. Right. Ritter, you know, Ritter, pure Ritter cut. is not. Yeah, he's not an A plus plus guy. But one of the things I argued for him was like, hey, he's got first round measurables. Maybe just that, but he's got first round measurables. And so I wouldn't I wouldn't have benched him either. Um and I understand why, and I, I don't think it's the worst thing ever, but I disagree with the benching. And I think that's that's the interesting spot. So we've given yeah, enough time I to, mean- to poor Ritter. Now, maybe it's because, which is kind of funny, you know, maybe it's because they were having pretty good success early on and winning some games they probably shouldn't have. Yeah. Uh, that they kind of got the coach kind of got into things that, man, well, you know, we have a chance at winning this division. So let's get Taylor in there to see if we everyone can does play. that division, yeah. everyone but the Panthers. That division is so bad. I want to play in that. What I have to play, why I would be in the division with the Bengals and the Ravens and the Browns, the fucking. I thought we'd play against the fucking the Bucks and the fucking the the <laughs> the Panthers. The Panthers. Oh God, come on. Who do you have at twenty two? Jordan Love. Um this is what I find horrifying about him. He is so supremely gifted, and you never see it. And, and when he was in college, he had that amazing year. And scouts talked about after that draft season that he was probably going to be a top five pick. And he goes back another year. He wants to polish his gameplay, which I respect. I would have gone because I want to get paid. But he 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 plays pretty bad. And so he's taken the late first round just off of raw measurables in one good year. He was up and down at the start of the year, but he had some big moments in the clutch. And it's like, okay, all right, I think he's getting it. And he's just falling off the cliff. I thought the Packers are going to be a wild card team. I thought that with all the time and preparation – Jordan Love. I thought they I thought they had a chance of doing it again. I didn't think they were going to have like another Hall of Fame quarterback. I thought Jordan Love was going to be like a top 12 to 18 guy. A pretty good player. Maybe his best years. He's like well, top we 10. Thought, we thought the Bears would be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. We The <laughs> NFC North has not been kind to us. He's a no. bad man. He's a bad quarterback. And I only have him yeah, this high because his talent is supreme. And then, I mean, like, again, look at this list. Like, Zach Wilson, Daniel Jones, Bryce Young, Tannehill. Like, there's some bad quarterbacks. So, like, it's not a good sign for the league that a guy like Jordan Love is making, like, not that my list means anything, but the fact that he's not lower. In years past, like, when Ben Ro- in the years, like, where a guy like Ben Roethlisberger is arguably not top five because of how deep it was, Jordan Love would be, like, the 27th guy. But, like, we need that infusion. It's another reason to play Ritter because maybe he can turn it around. We can have more good quarterbacks. It's a, right. a little scary. Well, then at least you know what you got. Like, I mean, exactly. It's just kind of telling them that, you know, we know you're not the guy. Like, I I do think they're done with Ritter. I will say I do think because they didn't they didn't really love him last year from reports. So I don't know why they drafted him. Um, But I don't get it. Like you got to let a quarterback play, man. Like you know, we we talked about earlier with Justin Fields. Like, okay, you don't like the guy, we'll send him off somewhere because somebody's going to take a chance on these guys. Yeah, and let them them actually try to. Yeah, somebody's starting Mac Jones. Like (laughs) it can get worse. It can get way worse. It can get way worse. Right, man. That's why I got. I'm not going to spend too much time on Jordan Love. He's been a top of 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 a lot of conversation recently because the Packers went from media darling this year to to dumpster divers. So it's I don't want to pile on because he's a really good kid, but he's just not good. 
And yeah. uh, it's horrifying that his talent – you're talking about Elway. It's like, yeah, he sucked, but you saw him throw that ball. You're like, ooh, that's special. Jordan Love doesn't have an Elway arm, but he has a special he, – he's got special physical traits, does not play like it. It's horrifying. Yeah. Horrifying. That's that's the key. Uh, the next few picks I'm going to have some video clips for. So um, number 21 will be a surprise now. I want there to be a caveat because I don't want people to overreact or say, oh, my God. Northman Anubis, he just fucking like said the weirdest thing. You brought up Ryan Tannehill, who I didn't even want to consider because he's just a journeyman anyway. Uh, but at 21, I've got Will Levis. Uh, yeah, the Kentucky kid. Currently batting at 60.7 QBR. Now, granted, he's only played a couple games, so I'm, I'm holding back. But this is this is one of my bigger picks when I say that potential. I saw what this kid was doing. Uh, in the cool fucking oiler uniforms, nevertheless. Yeah. Uh, and dude, he has an arm. Like he looks yes. good. Uh, granted, he has Hopkins, which is a great one of the best receivers you can have. But hey, it's not his fault. He's got that guy there. <laughs> if anything, it's gonna help him. Uh, but he looks like a guy that you can invest in, and he can probably be the guy for you in uh, much he better, felt, much more potential than Hannah. No, way bro, more. you're spitting facts because he felt he reportedly fell out of the first round, not because they didn't like his measurables and some of his tape, but because he he's the kid. He's always been kind of they've always said that he's a jerk, that he's kind of an ass, right. um, that he's a weird guy, and he didn't interview well. And I don't know if that means like he's a future Jay Cutler or whatnot, but. If you look at his measurable, he was a legit first round talent. Like with Ritter, I kind of had the squint. Maybe no, yeah. Levis was an obvious first round talent. And uh, look, those deep throws that he's hitting, those are some of the easier throws to hit. They say because you're really throwing more to a spot and whatnot. But we see quarterbacks all the fucking time. Like that's why Devonte Adams was pissed. He's like, I'm open. There's no one around me right. for ten yards because I'm so awesome. And Garoppolo's yeah. just Garoppoloing. So credit to him. <laughs> I, he's he's barely got a chance to play. They're starting him, um, and I like Levis. I'm a UK fan, but at the end of the fucking day, I would rather the Titans be a team that go and try to start somebody good with talent than just try out Tannehill and lie about where they are. Do you what do you think is the um, future for Malik Willis now? Because obviously he was a guy taken a couple of years prior, and he was kind of be like sort of the Kenny Pickett comment. draft. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, what do you I, think is going to happen with him? I think he's cooked. I mean, Malik Willis is one of the more talented quarterback prospects in recent memory. Like he's not quite on that Trevor Lawrence type deal, but he's physically incredible. But everybody hated his tape. Everybody had severe doubts about whether he, you know, are you so raw that you can't be built into anything and you know me like there's the john wooden quote like i can teach him to play i'm paraphrasing i can teach him to play basketball i can't teach him to be six foot ten or seven feet tall is the spirit of that quote coach him fucking coach him i hate that quarterback projects are over fucking coach him now i wouldn't take a project in the first round and a lot of people thought that malik was going to go there i think that they saw, and, and I love Mike Vrabel as a coach, but he did a horrible job with Willis last year when they some of those play calls at the end of the game just didn't make any 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 sense. I think yeah, they're they done with them. Doing that whole like um, almost like the slash type thing, you know, they bring him in for certain plays, and I'm like, this isn't college, dude. Like, you need to have consistency. This is why the guy can't build a rapport with his receivers because you're taking them out after every two, two he, downs. He, they, yeah, and then the game that he had to start, like I remember he was backed up and like they needed they needed the first down. And I can't I can't remember if they were running the ball or it almost felt like they were calling plays that he couldn't do almost to prove a point. And um, I'm not trying to defend my pick because I always said that like, look, I would take him and I would try to develop him, but at the end of the day, he is what he is. I think his time in Minnesota, or not Minnesota, goodness, in Tennessee is probably over. Um, I would imagine that if they didn't think that he could beat out Levis, who was a rookie, that they just don't have a lot of faith in him. That would be my guess. I think, and this is just a, a long thought theory, I think he ends up in Baltimore. That would be an interesting backup. 
They mean, love Huntley. What better though. guy to have like an heir apparent? <laughs> they love they love Huntley. They're never going to get rid of well, Huntley. Well, Huntley, I mean, still you can still carry Malik on three. I, I know the practice squad rules are different too. Mm -hmm. Um, who do you got at twenty one? Gardner Minshew. Hey, uh, yeah, that's that's where look I put him. You. I'm so I, proud I, of you. I'd have had him higher except the three fumbles, right, against the Browns. <laughs> um, so he's a guy, if he throws the ball well, he's going to fumble. And if, he and if he's fumbling, he's throwing the ball well. He's a high-end game manager backup. He's not he, – look, he's a little too small. His arm's a little too weak. He's just – He's like 10% of talent off from being a solid starter. He's like 20% talent off from being a good starter. He's a lot of fun. He's got that cult of personality. Um, Damn, I, 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 have, I have him as high as I do because the Indianapolis offensive line is not as good as it used to be. I told you all that that Quentin Nelson contract would age like fucking milk. Um, they have one wide receiver. They have two good running backs. I'm glad Taylor got paid. Uh, Taylor just came back. I believe the guy's name is Zach Moss. He's the only playing. problem for the Colts is can they keep everybody happy? They keep like pissing everybody. They, off. they now they hey, Taylor's happy because they paid him. And yeah, Moss saying, is though, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Pretty rocky, you know. It's like oh my god. Yeah, I know. And it's Pittman. To your point, Pittman got mad because he didn't feel like he was targeted enough. A couple couple weeks ago and to be fair to the Colts they did get screwed I, you know me I don't complain about the refs like uh, my, my rule is always yeah they suck and oh, yeah they can do bad I things do <laughs> right well you can play you complain in the moment when the game's happening it's fine but yeah. like to blame a game on the refs in totality they, it has to be real real bad it, basically only one or two games a year is going to hit that threshold the Colts could actually argue that they got screwed on the Browns that much and, uh, by the refs that much and against the Browns. And, man, I'm just going to be honest. I could have put Minshew lower because of some of the t some of the turnovers, but grading on a curve, grading off of the talent around him and some of the teams he's had to play, I think 21's fair. No, it's actually more than fair because out of all the quarterbacks that I've listed so far, he has the highest QBR. Yeah, his QBR is like in the top ten, and that's and I it's why is he seventh or sixth or something like around there? I don't know, but you know he's playing very well, and that, but again, I think it's a little bit more to do with his surrounding talent. Uh, I am kind he's of an efficient quarterback, right? So, yeah, I mean it, it's a matter for him. It's just a matter of can he if he gets into the playoffs, like good for him, like he deserves the credit, you know. Yeah, uh, but I, I got a feeling that the, the, the floor is just going to fall out from underneath him at some point. It's all it, it's it's already starting. Um, yeah. he's a look. He's a backup for a reason. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing no, wrong with being. That's a what backup. you get him for. I mean, yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah, good, absolutely. Number twenty. We talked about it earlier. Uh, I have a little bit more hope than you do at this point, but uh, certainly can he pick, pick it? it? Yeah. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, this guy gets it together, uh, hopefully tonight, too. Uh, but I think I actually yeah. think Tennessee to win. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Well, uh, man, with, with I, Levis starting? Yeah, yeah. I just On the road? Yeah. In Pittsburgh? Yeah. Pittsburgh by 30. Pittsburgh by 30. Dude, I will laugh if that happens, man. But Pittsburgh dude. by 30. I'll have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just I still like the kid. Um, it's only he's only in his second year, so like we'll see how it goes. Uh, I do worry about his health at times. He he gets hit a lot, and then like when he does, it's like broken. Uh, I have to start calling him glass, but you know he's got a lot of heart, and he can he gets well. hit real hard. He gets hit real hard. And, um, and I can't, and I really don't know what's going on with his inaccuracies right now. But you know he does have a rapport with Pickens, which is good. Uh, but you know you have to improve other way because once they start shutting down Pickens, you got to find the other guys. And so, Deontay Johnson got sixteen or fourteen or sixteen targets last week. Fryermuth is supposed to be coming back shortly. Uh, Jalen Warren has been a good third down back. Like I, I feel exactly what you're saying. I, I, I think the, I think the issue that I have with Pickett is this: it is a second year, but he did spend some time on the bench and he did spend some time learning. And, yeah. you know, obviously he's had the experience that he's had thus far. And, man, I just don't see the the, the development. 
Like he's got balls of steel and he's tough as fuck. And uh, he's gotten hurt on two plays on fourth down where our play call is basically uh, the end zone. Not, not even no, not even that. It's actually a passing play, but we're out of the fucking shotgun, which we can't pass protect out of. And it's a gimmicky play, and it ends with him getting fucking nailed in the midsection, and he's on the ground. So he's not doing well, but the things that he can control, he's not doing well in the situation is not great in many ways. But the things that he can control, he's just missing too many open throws. I just don't see the mental development. It's not hopeless like Paxton Lynch, but you get two years. That's the standard. You get two years. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's getting cut short and short. So these guys got to pretty much. Oh, it's uh, the easiest time to be a quarterback, right? Some of it is fair. It's the easiest time. Yeah. So, you know, as you say, you got to get your shit in order and get ready to get out there and uh, get it done. So. Absolutely. Uh, who do you got at 20? Baker Mayfield. Um. I, I I had I feel like I have described him perfectly from almost the jump. If you give him a really good team, he's really good. If you give him a bad team, he's going to be bad. If you give him a mediocre team, he's going to be mediocre. Now, his stats this year are actually a little misleading. He's got 10 touchdowns and only four picks. Uh, but he did kind of the thing where a lot of them came in one game. Uh, yeah. He's made some bad decision making. Sometimes he still thinks he's a better athlete than what he is, but he has been a resoundingly solid, but unspectacular, a little bit up and down mercurial quarterback. Um, the reason why I have him at twenty and not a little bit higher, because like, well, there's there's, there's thirty two teams, so why isn't he around sixteen ish? Is just because the guys ahead of him, I think, are a little bit more talented. I also, when I watch Baker Mayfield play, I, I, I do think I see a little bit of a physical decline. And the guys that I have ahead of him, I also believe are a little bit less dependent upon their surroundings, even if their surroundings are not that good. Right. Yeah, fair points. Um, 19, uh, this is probably the story of the year, and it's Baker Mayfield. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you and I are very close on this one. Uh, yeah. So he goes to Tampa and, you know, he was trying his best in Carolina. Obviously, he was Cleveland, got them probably the furthest they'd ever been. And even now, no, they beat us in the playoffs. Right. But, uh, yeah, I, I, look, I'm like you. I, I'm very skeptical still. Like, I don't know if he's the guy that's going to carry you to the promised land. But if you give him the right team, uh, certainly that will get the job done for you. And uh, he's actually looked very decent. Um, you know, he has a 57.5 QBR, which isn't mass. Like you usually don't want to be over 60, uh, but he's got a lot of good weapons to work with, uh, decent enough coaching. And, uh, you know, they've actually surprised some people this year uh, with his play. So <clears throat> in that division, it's kind of wide open right now. So yeah, it is a big part. It's of a, that. it's the worst division in football by far. Yeah, by far. But uh, they don't have a superpower, and they have arguably the worst team in football. So, and then they're all mediocre. The rest, the rest of them. So it's, it's tough. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So he's just a, a very interesting guy. Um, because I didn't think he was super bad in Cleveland, but there was some you know foobar moments where. He was trying to carry too much. I think that was part he, of the He shouldn't have played with that shoulder, and that I never blamed him for that. I also defended him a little bit when his offensive line got really – when they're down three starters, and people are like, well, he's horrible. I'm like, well, he's not very fast, and he's small, and they're out three starters. So, yeah, of course he's not playing well. Like, right. like, come, like you know, it is it is what it is. And, and I think his career looks so different if he doesn't do all those commercials – and he just doesn't fall off a cliff that year and doesn't play hurt. Um, and I am happy for him that he like he's going to stay a starter in the league probably. And so I feel like, uh, you know, quite frankly, there's no other way to put it. He won the Browns divorce. Yeah, he won the Browns divorce. He did. Uh, certainly, I, yeah. I mean, I'd rather be in Tampa than Cleveland any day of the week. So. Yeah. All right. Who do you got at 19? Uh, Sam Howell. I'm grading on a big curve here. I thought he was underdrafted. I think that once you factor in that he's young and you factor in that he's getting sacked like five to eight times a game, um, 
that he's playing pretty well. He didn't look. They have some weapons there. They got um, they got two nice running backs. They got Terry. Uh, they got scary Terry. Um, they have Dotson. So he's not throwing to scrubs. The skill player is actually quite good. I don't think their tight end is particularly we got noteworthy. Dotson. But they got yeah, they got Dotson. They got scary Terry. I'm a big scary Terry fan. I think he's vastly underrated. Um, that line is just really bad, and he does look uh, fucking. Sam Howell, he can really have moments where, uh, you know, you're like, oh, my God. And they're like, oh, my God. Um, but I have to just be kind of blunt about it. He's got the 13 touchdowns, respectable yards, and a tough division with that line, um, with a hard-nosed coach, and I like the enemy. I think the QBR is jipping him a little bit. I think one of my one of my complaints about QBR, it's better than just the normal quarterback rating stuff, but it still favors efficiency a little too much. And yeah. um, I think Hal is a legitimate is going to be a legitimate starter. And I thought I think more of him today as a prospect than I did of him coming out of college. Fifth round, I still thought was was pretty low for him. Fifth round, pretty yeah, low. Yeah, I think he was at least projected a second or third, but then just kept Yeah. Going. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, number 18. Uh, I tried to, as much as I could, to put this guy as high as he could. Um, he's not a bad dude. Uh, he tries his hardest. It's Russell Wilson, isn't it? Yeah, he's part of it's the Ru- <laughs> it's Russell Wilson. Uh, you know, and uh, I love him to death, but uh, not at, not at that two hundred forty mil that we're paying him. It's but, it's a brutal know, contract. Has moments that he looks really good. This Bears game was one of these one. Well, and that's why he got his contract. But the problem is, we don't have that guy on this team. <laughs> no, you have an older, more confused Russell Wilson. Right. Um, that's not all his have. fault. We we know no. that there was coaching issues. We know that there's players getting injured. Bad offensive line play, play at times, uh, but we've also discovered that you know he does hold on to the ball too long, and that can cause problems. So look, I'm not excusing the O line because we've always had some issues there at the last seven to eight years. Uh, but there are times that Russell is like trying to do too much. He's too much. Realizing what he has, and, and you so hold on to the ball. Yeah, that Peyton's like you know tell him to hold back and just you know maybe that's what's better for him because we're winning but uh maybe that's the way to go about it you know just don't let him Abs- yeah i have him i have him uh i have him higher yeah um the, with the holding on to the ball if you hold on to the ball and there's nothing there immediately you have to own it you own the pay man should say i wrote the check for every pass i ever threw and we know right. wide receivers fall down and deflections and silly shit happens. We know at the end of the game, sometimes you have to hold on to the ball too long so you can just try to make a play to win. All that stuff kind of goes without saying. With Russ, he's always held on. He's always been a guy who's trying to make a play. So he holds on to the ball too long sometimes. Fine. Because back in Seattle, it paid off way, way more than it hurt. And a lot of times he just tucked the ball and run with it. And he was better at just throwing the ball away or sliding or taking. It's like, fuck it. You know what? I am going to take a sack here, but we're still in field goal range, whatever. Right. He had some interesting stats when he holds on to the ball past 2.5 seconds. And a lot of them are good, but some of his worst moments come from there. So it's like he needs like a recalibration. This is what I will say for yeah, him. Yeah, and I think that's the argument that's always brought up is like, are you willing to live with the bad that comes with it? Like, you can and say I will, because- but I, I need more of the good. The good that we had before this was like, yeah, fuck yeah, I'll live with it. I don't give a fuck. Oh, no, he got fucking sacked. And it's second and 17 now, but then he converts the fucking first down. Like, I'd rather be an aggressive guy. I'm a, a Mike Shanahan fan. You play to win the fucking game. I know that's not a quote from him. That's Herm Edwards. But it's like, I'm trying to kill motherfuckers. And Russell Wilson was a killer. It's just that there are times where I post a really good article where they talk about like those good stats. And like like for him holding on the ball too long, and it's subjective. Sometimes you have perfect protection. Holding the ball too long isn't at that rough 2.5 standpoint. It's at 3.3 seconds or whatever the, whatever the fuck time you want to do it. But sometimes it's like, guy, man, I, this is what I just want to tell him. In Seattle, your wide receivers were better at extending the plays with you. 
and I will criticize Judy, who is a much better player than, than he gets credit for, and Sutton for that. Um, however, Sutton's having a really good statistical year, so the hate that Sutton gets is kind of weird to me. Um, be that as it may, I think my only gripe with Sutton is that you know, and it's not really his fault. It's not any player's fault when you get injured, but he gets injured a lot. Oh, uh, so. he does, he does, he does. But on the field, so he's been good one this of those year. Things, like I need, I need my best guys on the field. That's I do, and to, and you know? but and it's the fact that he comes back. Like no one's mad at Tim Patrick. We haven't seen him play in two years. Right, because right. he's back for like three, and 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 then I'm not I'm not taking a dig at Tim Patrick or or Sutton. I think the thing with Russ is when when Peyton said I'm taking away all your special privileges and toys and stop being a politician, stop kissing babies, stop being you know I'm, I'm paraphrasing the quote it makes it sound worse than what it was, but last year to, to quote my grandma Russell Wilson got too big for his britches, mm-hmm. and this year after being humbled. He comes across differently, and he is playing. I'll give you a spoiler. I have him at 15, Fair. but for his contract and, and the, the capital you gave up, I would have him a little bit higher. His stats are misleading. They're a little fugazi. Some of them came in garbage time. Some of them came where, hey, I'm playing you back in it, but he was the reason why they sucked. Uh, that Raiders game was excusable then. It is still inexcusable now. Um, he's had some bad moments. He's had some games where it's like, hey, I've thrown for a lot of yards, but it didn't matter. And he's had some games where the Broncos' offense was terrible. But he threw for three. The Broncos' offense was horrible against the Chiefs last week. But he threw for three touchdowns. He's all over the place. Yeah. And I, I feel like he should still be a little bit better than what he is. But, again, it's National Football League, and quarterbacks don't grow on trees. So, at the end of the day, with Russ, the big anchor, he's way better this year than he was last year. And not right. all of it was right. on Hackett. Because uh, right. some of those things that he really struggled with last year, people didn't want to hear it, but those were Russ issues. Um, I like where you have him. I have him, I think, a little bit higher. And I will say this for Russell Wilson as well. I'm saying the same things this year and evaluating the same way, the same way that I looked at it last season. Um, There's never been any bias against him. I mean, like, look, I, I, you know, all those reports and the stuff that Marshawn and Sherman, and I'm not a big Sherman guy, but a lot of his teammates said he wasn't the best teammate. He obviously wasn't the best teammate. He obviously wasn't the worst teammate either. And Pete Carroll gave him special treatment. And then what happened? They got rid of him. Guys are complicated. Not everybody, it's not a binary reality where you're 100% evil or 100% good. argue with Bronco fans on the board about like, oh, you're just hating on Russell Wilson. There, there's no reason for me to hate on Russell Wilson because I need him to succeed. Yeah, you my, you, you want to win playoff games and Super Bowl games. For my team to win. So like, if I'm criticizing him, there's a good reason for it. Like, and, and it, it, whether you think it's unfair or not, it doesn't matter because the reality is I need him to, to step up. Right. And it's like when he holds on to the ball. Okay, when I say like the hold on the ball too long, if I have the ball, I'm at 2.5 seconds, but there's not a pass rusher near me. And then I drift out and somebody gets open and I, and I chuck it and it's beautiful. And they catch it and touchdown. I didn't hold on the ball too long, contextually. If I do that and then he drops and he should have caught it, I didn't make the mistake. If I chuck a pass off my back foot, because I held on to the ball too long, and by a miracle we catch it and we get a big play, I fucked up. It just it just worked out. A lot of times people grade these quarterbacks, and it's not just a rust thing. It just pops up more with him based off of the result of the play. You can literally look at guys like Manning and Brady, who very rarely didn't know what the defense was going to do, and go, oh, wow, they fucked up on it, but they didn't complete 100% of their fucking passes either. Like, I will sit there – and be happy that Russ is playing better because at certain points last year, I did feel like, okay, he's getting memed and he was way too cocky and boisterous. And now he's getting dunked on, but he's not a bad fucking guy. He's not fucking Deshaun Watson. He just right. wasn't very good. Now, has he lived up to his contract? No. If right. he was on the same contract they had in Seattle, I would have him near the top 10 because at a certain point, you, the numbers that you put up fucking matter and his numbers are good. They're a little weak contextually, but his numbers are good. And problem, that is a problem for Russell for us 
is one the contract, but two, it's horrible. It comes back down to the short man syndrome. Like he, he's too old now to like try to relearn how to throw through lanes. Like you're just not going to be able to teach him that at this stage in his career. Yeah. So, but he plays, and I and I'm not tooting my own horn in any way at all because I'm not athletically talented like he is. But he and I played a similar way. I could not see over. I'm I'm six foot. I could not see over my line in high yeah. school. So what I do, I ran out and tried to find guys on the outs. Or in his case, like I would do, you drop back further, and then you'd have to throw further. Now, granted, I didn't have half the arm that he does. But no, he's got the, a he's got a cannon. But the, but the philosophy is the same. Like he needs to do certain things so he can see where the ball's going. The problem is he, it makes him kind of one dimensional. Uh, if he can't throw through lanes, then he we can't utilize him that well in the pocket. And so that's my only concern. Yeah, and, and that's my issue. And and that is stuff that I actually put more on Sean Payton because what Sean Payton said was you just look at the tape of what he did well in Seattle and the things that he did well last year and then the things that he's doing well once you're in the season like during game to game to game and that's what you go off of you've heard me bitch all the time that javante williams doesn't get enough touches you've heard me bitch that they don't run enough play action you've heard me bitch that they don't let that they sometimes don't actually let letting russ cook is good when you're not letting him throw the ball 50 times for the sake of him trying to win an mvp that's a different than letting russ letting russ cook by playing to a strict just keep running the ball. Let, I don't care if you yeah. have run it a hundred times. If we're winning ball games, that's what you do. I know it's it's a lot of money for a game manager, but if you're about winning football games, that's what you do. But if you look at the the play calling and you look at what the Bronc- Broncos offense has turned into, it mirrors a lot of oh, yeah. it does. what the Saints did with old Drew Brees. Right. And I just want them to run it as much as they did then but now, I don't, in I don't fairness to, Russell, I don't think in fairness to, there next year. No, I think they're going to cut him because it makes sense financially. Now, in Russ's defense, old Drew Brees got to throw the ball the fucking Alva Kamara out of the backfield, so that would be something that he's missing there as well. I think Russ is still an above average quarterback. Last year, it looked like he was it looked like he was less than, and so I actually am happy that he's better. I just want all the people there. There's just so many silly defenses for him. That's really that's he turned into a lightning rod. But that's enough about him. Uh, yeah. When I get to him, I'll just say a couple. I'll say like two things I like about what he's doing, and we'll skate on. All right, um, well you got an eighteen. Uh, at eighteen, this is where I have Justin Fields. I love the talent. I love the two big games. I actually love the fact that he's been able to avoid even more sacks than last year. Um, I think that it's really telling. Usually, when you have a quarterback who's playing poorly, the fans hate him. And Mm -hmm. it's really telling that Chicago fans mostly are rallying around him. It's kind of like a soft factor. We've talked about Fields a lot. We've even talked about him a lot, like not just on on this show. This is one thing I will also say for him. All that talent, he's 6'3", I think he weighs 225, the big arm, the mobility, all that stuff aside, that dude in that situation, lesser men have quit, both from the physical abuse and all the shenanigans around him. Yeah. And um, I will I will just say this in closing. Whoever decided to pair that young stud with a curmudgeon defensive coach should be fired. Oh, wait. It's the GM. That's yeah. it. Like I said, we talked about it before. If, uh, if Denver had him in Denver, I'd take him. Like, and yeah, I'm for not, that contract. I was never sold on him. I was never sold on him. Yeah. But, but for that contract, today, that's a bargain. Hell yeah. Yeah, give me that all day. Bye, Russ. Yeah. Thank yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. Uh seventeen. Uh another shocker of the world uh, outside of Baker Mayfield. But this one again, didn't think he was gonna turn much into the NFL. Like I was really doubtful, but you touched on it a little bit. Uh we have Mr. Sam Howe of the Commanders, uh doing some work there in Washington and they uh been playing pretty well. I yeah. really like what he's doing. Uh, he's utilizing both the pass and his running ability, not relying on one or the other too much. He, I think. Go ahead. He sorry. he's what I know. What I was gonna say is he is he's doing the things in a in a, maybe a better situation in terms of skill guys 
but even a worse situation the offensive line that I want Kenny Pickett. He's doing some stuff that I wanted Kenny Pickett to do. Yeah. And they, they kind of have a similar physical profile. Howell's and I, and I think a little less athletic, a, a little better arm. And I don't yeah. know if you feel the same way, but it's a little weird because Pittsburgh's had a nice long legacy of being a great franchise. But when I watch Sam Howe, he looks like a dude that wants to be there. He wants to play. And it's not that Kenny doesn't really like Pittsburgh. It's just I don't see the same desire for some reason that I see out of he, Sam. I think that the the reason for what you're seeing out of Pickett is Howell gets hit more than Kenny. Kenny gets hit a lot. Right. Kenny's getting hit harder. Um, He's getting hit from the blind side a lot. He's getting hit on those fourth down plays that have both taken him out because we, we call the shotgun gimmicky play, and he just takes a huge shot. Um, I think that, I think that with Howell, like, like this play, I remember this one. So he's running. So he's, he's doing the bootleg. It looks like he's trying to move the ball downfield and he hits the guy and gives him a chance for the, the yak. Okay. Hits yeah. that guy, gives him a chance for the yak. That's not a special throw. It's not a beautiful throw. And it's not that Howell doesn't have some boneheaded throw. He absolutely does. But the enemy is doing a good job of giving him an outlet to get the ball and putting that guy, that outlet guy in a position to succeed. That's not happening in Pittsburgh, but sometimes it is and Pickett doesn't see him. So how is it's weird to have him that high? Cause the stats definitely do not justify it, but he is in Washington. He is in that division. He is with that offensive line. You know, there are mitigating factors. And it's just a down year for fucking quarterbacks. There's just no way to put it. It's just a down right. year for quarterbacks. Who you got at 17? Matt Stafford. Um, Matt Stafford is a Hall of Famer. I will die on that hill. I will debate that any any day, any place, any time. Um, I see a guy who – He's he might miss this games. He might miss a game this week because of injuries. I want him to retire. Um, he's played a little bit better than I thought he would. He's not playing particularly great. We can't find the end zone for whatever reason. The arm's still electric. He's still sometimes he surprises you with his mobility. This is not Matt Stafford a couple years ago in the Super Bowl. It's not Matt Stafford for Detroit. He's not washed physically, but right. the tides are coming in. The tide is coming in, and I have him here partially off of his track record. I have him here because he's not playing with a great line. I have him here because, like, Puka, that guy, he's a really great player. Of course, the Rams found him, and 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 uh, Atwell is playing well, and he's, so he's doing some nice things with some young receivers, and he's a big fucking part of that. But Matt Stafford, I could have made the case that he should be in the low 20s. And he is getting a. I'm a Rams fan too. That's my NFC team. And I'm from Springfield, Illinois. And St. Louis was an hour and a half away. So you can absolutely call bias if you want. I have Stafford here. I think this is where he should be, but it could be. I could be rating him too high. Um, however, the Rams are in a position to make a wild card slot. Well, I don't think that they will, but they're still playoff viable. Um, and he is a big part of that because he is kind of keeping the, the, the boat afloat, so to speak. That's why I got him where I have. All right. Well, my next four picks are going to be pretty short and to the point. Um, okay. Because there's not going to be a whole lot to say on it other than they're better than what we talked about. But I'm not going to really – most of my talk and your talk is going to be about the guys really towards the top of the list. So Absolutely. 16, I have uh, Mr. Derek Carr, the Saints. That's where I have him for similar analysis to, to yeah. Stafford. Obviously, yeah. it wasn't as good. Prime Stafford was much better than Prime Carr, but, you know, similar stuff with physical washed. Yeah, you know, and I thought, really, I thought that uh, he would, I thought the Saints would be better. I mean, Carr's looked okay, obviously. He hasn't been horrible, but. He's been a he's rough that, the past couple weeks. He's that weeks. mid-tier yeah. guy that I've always thought he was. But I thought that he was a step up from what they had before. But oh, he's better than Jimmy G. And he's better yeah. than um right. than whatever whatever. Who was their quarterback? Oh, they were playing Andy Dalton at one point last year, I think. Jimmy Smith Winston. Yeah, yeah. There was some. Yeah, he just yeah, kept trying to fall over every five minutes. That's the problem. Yeah. I gotcha. Uh, uh who do you got at 15? 
Geno Smith, the Seahawks. Okay, I got Russ at fifteen. Okay. Yeah. Um. Hey, how fitting is it, Geno and, and <laughs> yeah, Russ? The trade. The trade. Um. Who you got at fourteen? Uh Kirk Cousins. Um. Oh. And I feel no. bad because the dude's now out of the season. Uh, yeah, you know the thing is, and this goes back to poet and I. We we've been big Kirk Cousins supporters for a long time now. Um, he gets a lot of shit for a lot of different things. Now, granted, he hasn't really gone above that point that we need him to, but it's not all his fault. Uh, you know, there are people that are detractors that say that he's not really a top tier quarterback, but. Dude, compared to a lot of guys in the league, he's a consistent guy. He puts consistently up puts up numbers and consistently takes flawed teams to the playoffs. I'm laughing because my buddy, he's at the Steelers game, and he said, this is a beautiful night. He's in a pick. It's a beautiful night. It's a beautiful night for three and outs. So, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. He's a diehard Steelers fan. Um, yeah, I have – so I have Russ at 15. And um, I, the only thing I wanted to add for him, real quick, is we got we have to start talking about Russ being tough. Like yeah. we've kind of lost the the fact that he's physically tough, and we also have to. I wanted to talk about the uh, the fact that he had the ability to humble himself, and a lot of guys don't. Mm -hmm. um, and so for Gino, I would only add Gino's playing well, but mm -hmm. he gets in these weird funks where he's got like six ints. Some of them are wonky. Only nine touchdowns. He was good against the Bengals, except he could not get them into the red zone. He's having a weird season, but Seattle's five and two, and they look tough. Well, so Gino like reminds me just a lot of Derek in a sense that these guys work well in the system that they're in, and that they can only take you to a certain point. But level, yeah. If, if Carroll and the Hawks want to get back to the Super Bowl, they're going to either have to really load that team so that Gino can get them there or they're going to have to find another quarterback because eventually yeah, absolutely because it happened last yeah, 100%. You know who Gino reminds me of? Who? Steve McNair when he got to the Ravens. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not Tennessee Steve McNair was nasty, but yeah. Steve McNair when he got when he got to the Ravens and he was right. still he was still decent at least for that first year. Yeah. Um oh, we on 14? Uh yeah, you said that was who? I got Brock Purdy. Okay, he's been he's Brock. been sliding up and down. I think that we missed the boat with him. I'll be brief because everyone's talking about Brock Purdy. It's not about how good he is now. It's about how good he's going to be at the end of the season. He was playing like an MVP when he had everything around him. Now the guys are hurt. He's playing bad. I will say this. They should have won the Cleveland game. They missed the kick. Okay. And then those two picks the next week, he had the concussion. So – um, is I look still, at those is two. He's still missing uh, Debo and all them too, though. And Debo, I think, is supposed to be back. Trent Williams, I think, I think almost everybody is supposed to be back. Um, but he still had Kittle, McCaffrey, and Ayuk. So they were, they were, they were, and, and uh, Mitchell too, the yeah. the other good running back that they have. So he's had some weird stuff that's made him look better than what he is and worse than what he is. I I see a lot of ex quarterbacks put him on tape, and talk about how much they like him. And for a long time, I used to push back against the ex-quarterbacks because I thought that they were just kind of like liking the game manager stuff too much because a lot of those guys were game managers. Some of them are a little bit more credible than others. I think I got to put per, – uh, uh, if we did this three weeks ago, I would have had him at 9 or 10. I have him at 14 here because I don't want to overreact to some of his first bad games. It's under some weird circumstances. Um, yeah. my, here's my biggest complaint about him. When he plays well, it looks like he's a tactician. He understands the philosophy and everything about the offense. And when he plays bad, he looks like a guy who has no idea what's happening. I want to <laughs> believe that's what was going to propel him past his limited talent is this. And yeah. if this can't do it, then he can't do it. Um, right. So that's the biggest fact. Then again, with that arm that he has, one big arm injury, and he might be cut. So, But I like Brock Purdy. I like Brock Purdy. I don't love him. 13, uh, you talked about a little bit. Um, guy still has some talent. Uh, the team, I believe, is just in shambles. Uh, it's Matthew Stafford and the Rams. Um, 
still, you go up against that team, dude. You always have to worry about Matthew Stafford. He's still a threat, and he can go know, Nova. He can go Nova. Yeah, and you just got to watch out there. I, I don't really expect him to make the playoffs. Like I said, they're just really. Yeah, you got Aaron Donald there, and you got some good defensive pieces and stuff, and you got uh, Cooper Cup. But outside of that, man, like there's just not a lot that screams at you. Like this team is ready to go for another run. Like they just don't have it. And they're they're Matt's getting they're older, not. and it's you know. But at least he got his new ball. Like right? you know, he finally got his one day in the shine. Uh, first year with a real coach. Yeah, first year of the real coach. First Super Bowl at yeah. thirteen. I have C.J. Stroud. Um, okay. I'm grading on a curve. I love everything he's fucking done. Obviously, you love the contract. We're talking more about contracts this time. He's playing well. If he was a veteran, I'd be saying that he was playing well. The fact that he's a rookie playing this well with a really bad line is impressive. He beat the shit out of my Steelers. It was really <laughs> impressive how, how he did it, how he did it, because um, yeah. he, he beat the blitz by making the right things here. Am I grading on a curve? Absolutely. But he's he, – Nico Collins, Tank Dell, Damian Pierce – uh, Dalton Kincaid, other than Kincaid, they're all, or not Dalton Kincaid, good Dalton Schultz. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, those are all young, all young pieces and he's vibing with them. He's gelling with them. So look, he's on pace to hit just under 4,400 yards. I know it's the modern passing league. That's still a real number. He's playing really well, like no qualifiers. Well, now, if he was a veteran, I'd probably have him in a year where there's better quarterbacks, like a couple of years ago. He'd probably be around the four, he'd probably be around the 15, 16, maybe 18 range. But he's a rookie, and this is the, the quarterbacks that we have this year, or the quarterbacks that we have, unfortunately. So he's 13. CJ Stroud, absolutely love it, man. Love what I'm seeing from him. Wish, wish there was a good young quarterback in the NFC. Well, they all have to be in the <laughs> NFC. Number 12, uh, and this is why I love Edgar Allan Poe, my friend. My favorite quarterback in the draft at number 12. CJ Stroud. Yes, and he is a monster playing for a team that he probably has no business playing for. But as you said, the team is rallying around him. They seem excited. They're having fun. And I don't think they're really too worried about where they're going to end up. Like, there's no pressure. They're there. trying to win games and build something. They don't yeah. have to worry about the quarterback. They got they traded for the, the pass rusher. Now they're just trying to be as good as they can be because they know that they're probably not going to have the greatest record. So it's not like they're not going to have any talented guys falling to them. Yep. And I, I just – I love everything about him. I hate – I notoriously hate Ohio State Ohio quarterbacks. State quarterbacks. We fight I over them every him. year. I did not hate no. him in college, and I like him here. Uh, I really, really hope he succeeds in the NFL because he seems like a cool dude. I know some people talk about character issues, but uh, he just looks like a phenomenal player. He, and I, character I know, issues? Just, character issues from the guy who had to delete all his social media because he was getting death threats and to the point that people sent him money over Venmo so they could text t- him nasty things? Yeah, I might right. be a little bit grumpy about that too. If you tell yeah, me that right. you want me to die because I'm a piece of shit um, <laughs> because I threw a pick against Michigan, uh, yeah, I might be a little testy about that too. Yeah. Character issues have to be something substantial, not that I'm a little grumpy in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I just I really like him. I mean, like it's funny because his build and the way he plays really kind of weirdly reminds me of John Elway, and I don't know why, but it just does. Uh, but I, I don't know, man. I'm excited for him. I'm glad he's having a great year. Uh, wish him the best, and really. You know, Houston's one of those kind of teams that, like, even when Shab was there and stuff, that I know Neko and I, we always kind of rooted for the Texans on the side. Kubiak was their uh, coach for a while. Yeah, uh, it's just one of those teams that you want to see something good happen. And we were, we were actually David Carr fans uh, a bit. So it's until like, they ruined him. Anyone well, who calls him a bust is a hate. Destroyed him. Three David of the five. At Derek's like, dude, I wish I could have went to the Raiders for those. Raiders, <laughs> right? He, I believe he he was sacked the most ever in NFL history. And I believe out of the five years or the five most sacked years in in quarterback history, I believe he has three of the five. Yeah, it was like seventy so, to seventy five sacks. It was the most. He, yeah, time. there there was a crazy stat about how in three years he got sacked more than Dan Marino did in all of his. Now, part of that was. Marino had a good line. He had that crazy release, but there's, I got, I got to find that. I got to find that stat. No, CJ Stroud, another young, talented star quarterback comes to the AFC. 
And if if he pans out and Trevor takes a leap forward and Richardson pans out, then the poor Titans are going to be like, Levis, you have to be good. <laughs> There's too many killers yeah, in this division. You have to be is. good. But yeah. Yeah, that yeah man. Then, then be crazy. Crazy. Yeah, dude. Uh, at 12, I have Geno Smith. Um, mm-hmm. I, I talked about how his stats aren't as good, are a little misleading. Um, I love the reason why I have him as high as I do is the connection that he's building with JSN and some of those young receivers while his veterans are out was perfect. Um, and quite frankly, Gino is another feel good story. Yes. Um, and proof that if you're a quarterback, you do not want to go to the Jets. I'm <laughs> just saying. Yeah, no, I mean, and that's a great place for him. I mean, look, uh, last year we thought the Hawks were doomed. We thought, oh, Denver got the steal to century to get in Russell Wilson. Opening game, like Smith is like abusing us. And we had a good yeah. game. You know, so, uh, yeah, I have no problem at all with uh, where you placed him because they're always going to be competitive. I just think that Geno's really at his ceiling. Right yeah, now. He, exactly. Not everybody can be a Hall of Fame. Sometimes your quarterback's just good. And right. the, here's the now here's an interesting thing with Geno. I'm talking about this year specifically. At the end of the year, he might be higher. At the end of the year, he might be higher. And since that dude's so tough and he's got such a Warriors mentality to stay ready for so long, you know, being a backup and whatnot, I would not be shocked. I know he was not good in the postseason last year. I would not be shocked if he goes the exact opposite way and goes fucking Duke Nukem on some people's ass. I just dated myself with the Duke Nukem reference, so I feel very (laughs) old. But, yeah, I got him. I think 12 is a pretty good spot for him. All right. Uh, Number 11, uh, this is an interesting pick for me um, for a, a number of reasons. One. This is a guy that I wanted to take a chance on late in the draft a couple of years ago. Two, uh, he has probably the third highest QBR in the NFL, but he's at 11. Mm. And there's reasons for this that Poet has talked about. And that would be, uh, to me, he's a feel good story. And now, Poet, you know, you're kind of like, mm, I think he's kind of done, but you never know. And that's Brock Purdy. 49ers. I, I, I really like this kid. He has some great passing. Uh, he has a good story because he's just coming out of nowhere, uh, especially after last year. And uh, we kind of knew, though, that, you know, eventually the rest of the league would catch up. And I think that's sort of what's happening in these last couple of games is they're starting to figure him out, some of his tendencies and whatever. So you're right. Ultimately, if Brock is going to succeed going forward, it's going to be a mental thing for him because he's going to have to make sure he's studying up. Most of the best QBs ever played a game were guys who were students of the game. It wasn't yeah. just the athletic ability. You had to be students of the game. Uh, people didn't think that John would be a guy that would study film. He did. And, and like, eventually he, he, he right. He, he, he had to mature because he was just used to being physical Jesus. Right. And when you're, and when being physical Jesus doesn't work, it, it, it it's not an adjustment period. Well, people will talk about Peyton Manning. Well, Peyton Manning was obviously a really good talent. His arm got worse as he aged because of the neck and the wear and tear. He had a really good arm coming out of college. But he also wasn't doing John Elway things. You, these kids have to take some time to kind of figure out that, like, I can't just truck everybody. Or I can, and then my career gets – shortened um and so i do think purdy i think purdy if i had to if you put a gun to my head i think that he'll be in the niners for a while i think he'll have a couple years where maybe he's top 10 ish and i think that over time he'll fall to the middle of the pack and then i think he'll probably catch an injury like every quarterback does and i think that's what will be will wipe him out but i think that he does have a future i think he has a future in San Fran. I just, I think that there is a little bit of a love fest that, you know, the whole stuff, like he's a, he's a top five quarterback. He's the MVP saying that he was the MVP was fine. If you're just doing the look, it's, it's five weeks. It's basically just a stat contest. That's what the MVP at week five is. But there's some people who thought that he was truly going to be a top five quarterback in the league. And I don't, I don't, I know I was never there. I know that you are never like, Oh man, he's going to be, he's going to be better than Mahomes soon. 
But people get excited about quarterbacks. People get excited about quarterbacks. He could go like either one or two ways. He can either become the next Tom Brady. Yep. Or he's going to come next Jimmy Garoppolo. That's really what it's going down to because now his efficiency, he's at 74.3 QBR. That's fucking amazing. Yeah, that's real high. But you and I will agree. He's in one of the best situations in football. And he is you know, in like, the best situation. Right. And he, he has the arguably the best play caller. He has the best one two. He he has the 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 Niners wide receiver one two punch is behind only the Bengals, the Eagles, the Dolphins. There's only a couple. There's only a couple of teams that are ahead of them. Kittle who I think they don't use enough sometimes is a it's still a top 10 tight end probably higher. McCaffrey is the best running back in football. Um Trent Williams is is elite. The, lo- the offensive line is really good. The defense is good, not nearly as it was last year, but they keep adding pieces like Gregory and they they traded for Chase Young and whatnot. Brock is going to have to take a big leap forward in terms of there's no thing. I, I don't want to sound like I'm saying that he's dumb because I don't like the stuff, the breakdown of him. I think he's a smart quarterback, but he's going to have to be a genius quarterback because yeah. that arm's not great and that he's athletic, but he's also small. I, yeah. I had I had mock drafts saved where I had him take go somewhere between the fifth and the sixth round. I think he is the difference between him and other lower talent guys like Hoyer or Keenum or stuff like that. He doesn't. He's not scared to play big boy football. And that is just something. He's got that dog in him. And I'm not uh, an intangibles he's very, guy. Uh, he's very gunslinger. This is one of the things yeah. when I was watching him at Iowa State, there was a lot of buzz about him. And like, so I was like, ooh, this is a guy I wouldn't mind taking. And then I started to like kind of warm off of him because down the stretch of that season. He was pick city. He was going to right. pick city. Bumble and, but city. But that's sort of what you're dealing with, like with the, these gunslingers. So I was like, and so, really, the best situation for him was Kyle Shanahan because they can kind of like restrain him a little bit and say, "Okay, we're going to keep you here doing this. We're going to run the ball. We're going to, you know, have good defense. So we just need to be smart." Obviously, the last couple yep. of games, we're starting to see those flaws that he has when he's making bad decisions with the football, and that's why we have him low as we do because it's it's just a matter of how much of it is the set of stuff around him versus him. And yeah, until and, we and see him, like until we see him become the guy and say take charge and like cr- make uh, water into wine, it's going to be everyone else. And it's gonna it's gonna come because like I and I hate to say this, but Debo has been banged up before. Ayuk has been banged up before. Trent Williams has been banged up and he's old. McCaffrey has been hurt plenty of times. Kittle has been hurt plenty of times. If the season started. If the playoffs start and all five of those guys are healthy, as healthy as you can realistically be at you know being a football player in week 18 or whatever week they'd be playing in, they would probably win the Super Bowl. But none of I don't know a, of a year where both Debo and Ayuk and Kittle all started 16 games. And so I'm not saying that. I mean, one, if they lose McCaffrey, they're just fucked because he is the engine of that <laughs> offense. He is the engine of that offense. Yes, and that's why I was saying, like, my MVP was McCaffrey. I didn't know what people were seeing, quite frankly. But um, they're not going to – their best-case scenario is all those guys are playing and they only have injuries that mitigate them heavily, but they can still make a play or two. And it's going to fall on him. There's never been a Super Bowl – like, even like Nick Foles was a game manager-esque guy. But he had to play like Jesus against Tom Brady. He still got outdueled. So it's he's gonna Brock Purdy will not be able to not play. He will not be able to avoid playing big boy quarterback in the playoffs. It just it just doesn't fucking happen. Yeah. And uh it's a good spot for him. If this was a couple weeks ago, we would have had to have him higher because the numbers were just too crazy. Um what where did you have him at? I had him at eleven. 11? So I got have? Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott would be higher, but for he's physically diminished and they don't let him run as much as I want them to. He's still really good. He still hits big throws. He's 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 getting his his mojo back with CD Lamb. Um, they miss Ke- uh, Kellen Moore, but because they've let him throw the ball a little bit more and not just try, this is just opinion, but run it for the sake of running it. 
Uh, that's when Dak Dak is at his best. People think he's at his best when they run the ball 55 and throw the ball 45. He's actually at his best when they throw it 55 and run it 45. He needs to get in rhythm, and that's when he can dominate a game. Um, he just he – just, the biggest ding on him, man, that Niners game happened, and we all fucking saw it. And he's he's had it's some like other games. Right? Yeah, and, and, <laughs> yep. And they, he's, they've had some games where he didn't really get a chance to cook because the defense and the special teams just got him up so much. So he might be higher than – he might have been higher in different sets of facts, but I think 11 is a pretty good spot for him. He's always been that 8 to 12 guy anyway. Yeah. Um, who do you got at 11? One second, my dog is doing silly things. Nope, nope, nope. We're actually in the top 10 now. That's right. Number 10. I'm warming up to this guy. I still have my reservations, but, you know, I can't say. I, I, You're going to say it's I, Lamar. It's, it's Lamar, Lamar, isn't it? It's Lamar. Oh, yeah. He's been a killer this year. He's been slinging it. Yep. Uh, you know, and that's, you know, they were going through all that contract shit over an off season. I really didn't know he was coming back, man. I thought he was. Hey, and you know what, you know what contract he got? The one that you and I kind of agreed that he should get, put it somewhere in the middle and then Jalen Hurts will sign and then get $1 million more than him or whatever it was and just go back to winning football games. Yep. And so, yeah, you know, look, this guy's always been an athletic freak. Uh, he can run like the best of them, but eventually that's going to be something it's going to go away. So you have to be able to improve the accuracy in the passing. He's been hot and cold in that area. I've seen him have some games that is like outrageously crazy passing wise. Uh, but, you know, it, it's about consistency in the NFL. And so that's what he needs. And it's going to be interesting to see if he can once again try to carry this over into the, the postseason because – that's their Achilles heel. Once they get to the postseason, it's like it almost goes away. Like once you shut down the run, he can't seem to get them back into it with the, the, the passing, and then they just end up losing. Uh, so, but now this year they look pretty balanced. Uh, they seem to be staying healthier than usual, which is awesome. Thank God. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, it's, it's, that's always fuck, man. Do you remember that year where they were out like their two tackles and almost their whole secondary by week three? And then, and then there's a the year where they're out. I think it was last year. Last they're out year, all the fucking running, running backs. backs yeah. Them, yeah. And, then, and then their secondary got demolished again. Um, I think they, I think they were getting ready to call me to go run for him. Like, yeah. Know. Fuck it. <laughs> HB up the gut. You remember that play call? I, I this is what I want to say based off of what you're talking about. Zay Flowers, great draft pick. He's been playing really well. I forgot ODB, no <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Well, so when they played the Steelers, they dropped about three passes that would have scored. One was in the end zone, and two they would have ran it in. Um, right. One was by Nelson Aguilar, no surprise. Another one was by Bateman or whatever his last name is, no surprise. Right. And then. One was by it wasn't Andrews. It might, I can't remember who it was, but I was like, "Oh my god!" Like we're playing really good defense, but they're bailing us out. And then yeah. Lamar eventually he was playing like Superman. He threw that horrible pick in the end zone to Joey Porter Jr. Thank God he's yeah. finally starting. Um, <laughs> he's been a really good passer this year, and he's looking to throw first. And so, what's going to be stanky about them when they get to the postseason? Because they're going unless they just completely fall off, right? Um, if you get used to defending the pass and then he just goes fucking ape shit on you running the ball, like he just goes Superman, it's going to be horrifying to deal with. And they are the quintessential team that we are always going to be a little bit better than what our record says. And you don't want to play us in the playoffs. Thank God their coach is washed. Thank God Harbaugh no longer has it. Um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and thank God their defense can be got. I have uh, Lamar Jackson a lot higher because I think that he's an MVP candidate, but you yeah. don't have him at an unfair spot. At 10 for me, Kirk Cousins, baby. He's got that bad offensive line. Justin Jefferson's been out for half the season now. His running back situation is so bad that they had to trade for Cam Akers, and he's still balling. Some of those red zone uh, interceptions that people want to blame him for weren't on him, but why would we ever watch the plays to know what actually happened? We could just read the box score because that's really cool, especially (laughs) if you hate Kirk Cousins and you don't have to actually have a factually based opinion on him. Um, I don't ever expect anybody to give this man his due credit. Kirk Cousins is a stat machine and people can bash out all they want, but you know what? Stats win games. And you know what else they do? They get you paid. 
So Kirk yeah. Cousins, I hope you come back from your Achilles. Uh, he's been better for all the haters that that on the board that have him. He's been by far and away better than any quarterback Denver has had since Manning, and even honestly since the Super Bowl Manning. Now Super Bowl Manning was a mental genius. I'm not I'm not saying the Cousins would have done that. However, Kirk Cousins has been better than Russ Wilson for three years now. Yeah. All the Russ haters or all the Russ lovers, the people on the Russ bus, eat a dick. Yeah, just got it. Sure, you just, you just got it. It's 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 fact. Like it, it's it, it is a literal fact. No matter how you slice it, you want to do playoff stuff. It's him. You yeah. you want to do stats. It's him. You want to do being over, you know, five eleven. It's him. Whatever measurement you want to use, it's him. And you know what? I thought that Kirk Cousins. I do have him a little bit higher than I actually think that he should be. But at the end of the fucking day, if a guy goes out there in tough situation after tough situation. Justin Jefferson goes down, and all of a sudden the youngsters are balling out. It's because he's a good quarterback. Can I ask and you I don't, a question? I, can I answer your question? So tell me, uh, since we're on this topic, uh, when the last time the Commanders were in the playoffs, who was the quarterback again? Can you remind me? I didn't think the – fuck, I think they made it one year with Heineke because remember when uh, – Chase Young was like, I want to beat the GOAT, no, 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 and then the, no. the Bucs mean, I mean killed him. Quarterback. Oh, oh, it was Kirk Cousins. Yes, it was yes, him. Yes. It was him. It was him. And you know what? <laughs> Fuck the haters. Kirk Cousins styles on you hoes. It's in the Bible. In uh, the Bible. Who, you got, who you got at nine? Number nine, a uh, guy that I think has improved immensely. However, I will say that you kind of hit the nail on the head when you said that. They were having a hard time deciding who, what kind of team they are this year between the Cowboys and the 49ers. But uh, as far as overall play, I am pretty impressed with Dak Prescott. I think he's looked a lot better this year uh, than in the past. I think you're right. I think they're better when they're allowing him to kind of like lo loose a little more with the ball, run less. In fact, I think it might be something that Cowboy fans might hate. I think Pollard's better than e Elliott. Uh, I think he's just – Oh, it definitely is goal. now. Yeah. yeah, just far more versatile. Uh, could do a lot of different things for you in that offense. Uh, they work on speed. Lamb's playing very well, having some of the best years of his career. Uh, so it, it's really nice to see the desk come along. The problem I have with the Cowboys, of course, are they going to fall into that similar trap that we hear every year? Because every year they talk about, ooh, it's the Cowboys year. Yeah, it's the Jerry Jones just be talking for the sake of talking. Yep. So, uh, uh, I get it. I yeah. get it. But you were right. You know, th th this is about, you know, Dak will probably end up in that 8 to 12 range every year because of these simple facts that, you know, facts. he has games where he looks great. And then he has he is, he's a little bit mercurial. And statistically, this is actually a little bit of a down year for him. But the thing with, the thing with the Cowboys is they're going in the postseason unless, like, colossal injuries or really weird shit happens. Right. Their defense is really good. They just got Brandon Cooks back. And so one of the reasons I'm so happy with Dak is they haven't had their number two wide receiver for a while. And they have Jake Ferguson. Looks like he's a pretty good tight end. But they also had they also lost uh, the guy that went to the other Texan team, uh, the Texans. So not ideal circumstances. And, you know, sometimes Pollard, you know, who's much better than what his stats say as well because the defense, like the Cowboys are really good at killing bad teams. And it warps some of like what Dak gets an opportunity to do and what Pollard gets an opportunity to do. We will judge them based off of what they do in the postseason because they do have a deep playoff Super Bowl caliber roster. And I think a guy with Dak, his track record has been so good because even last year, those picks, a lot of them were actually not on him. Uh, the wideouts were running the wrong routes and or fell and or both. That was always bad. But the end, the end of the postseason for them two years in a row was fucking ugly. And yeah. so... Well, what was that uh, last year? The uh, Zeke Elliott is the center play. That was that was horrible. Well, I'm just saying, and they, you, you lose to Brock Purdy. Yep. A year before, the same Niner team with Jimmy Garoppolo comes in and Jimmy in Dallas. Yeah, that was harsh. That's that like was the all, worst loss. It panned. Yeah. It panned to all their fans crying at the end, and so. I'm a, I've liked, uh, so I thought Dak sucked. Like coming out of college, I was like, he's going to be awful. And then he was, and I was like, oh, I was wrong. And I, I like him. I like him a lot. Um, and the thing with him is we will, he will be ultimately judged in the postseason. 
So yeah. tune, we'll tune in later. Yeah. At nine, I have I have a combo at eight and nine. Okay. It's uh, it's uh, I'm pairing Trevor Lawrence and Justin Herbert, the guys okay. who played each other last year in the postseason. One guy who had the great comeback, but they only needed the comeback because he was horrible, and then the other guy who played great, and then he didn't do anything in the second half. They're both uber talented. Uh, Trevor Lawrence is playing well, but he's not playing well enough. He needs to take a step forward. He needs to honor the talent that he has. Herbert is playing really well statistically, but they're not winning games. We know what the Chargers' issues are. They have a lame duck head coach. We know their defense is historically bad. And we know that with uh, Mack and Bosa and Derwin James and all those guys, I think Derwin got hurt, but their defense should not be 30th, 31st, or 32nd. Be that as it may. They should not have two wins either. And while I think Staley is a bad coach and was a bad hire, and while I think that that defense is really bad, and I know Mike Williams has been hurt, Eckler has been hurt, Herbert has the ability to carry them a little bit further. So I have them both there. I know a lot of people have Trevor Lawrence higher, but they're kind of linked with one another a little bit, and they both need to do a little bit more in different ways. So I wanted to put them there at eight and nine. So I thought that would be an interesting narrative to spin. Okay. Uh, number eight, Neko, can you give me an assist, please? Yeah. There's a reason for this. Ooh, the Steelers are driving. Wait, is it my man? Come here. You get to read it all. And DJ Anubis's number eight pick is my man, Jared Goff of the Ooh. Lions. Ooh. <laughs> I, I, Love it. I have to say, I I love him. I said it at the beginning. If you remember when we were I doing do. all of our, I said this is the Lions' year. She's been you talking did. him up all she, year. She I did. Know. So we're not going to talk about what happened in Baltimore or yeah. what you said to me when I picked the Broncos' season. <laughs> this is not. The <laughs> this is the Lions' season. Now, yes. We have seen some bloodbaths in Baltimore because we go to all the Bronco Ravens games. And yeah, I, I, I know. <laughs> the only time that we witnessed an actual win of the Broncos beating the Ravens was what eight years ago when Peyton Manning was playing. So the GOAT, Peyton the GOAT, my GOAT happens. at the very least. I mean, every, I, I tried to get down to the, the tunnel and say, can't touch I mean, it, touch my hand. Like, <laughs> please, please. Thank we you. Thank you for now. And we waved and he just like, did the whole, like, you know, you know, Peyton thing. We waited. We waited till everybody cleared out and he was done his little. Um, but Jared Goff. Oh, my God. He's playing well. He's, and it started from last I love year. him. I, you, I, you, know, you, you remember all the shit that I took for being a golf guy and, yeah. uh, on that board. Cause he had the, all the Shane stuff and the fuck the Rams. And then Shane Abe, like I don't know why I hated. Yeah, it was, it was wild. I have him at seven. I have, I have him at seven. So and okay um, that. yeah. uh, that's, that is look, he has his weaknesses. He does yeah. not do well against the blitz. Okay. That well, arm is you and I during the draft that we did. Yeah. We saw the Lions picks and we're like, these guys are not going to do well. Like they did not really select. We, we didn't we like hard. the Gibbs. Yeah, we were because like the Swift, the Swift trade, he's killing it in Philly. That was weird. And I still mm -hmm. think it was wrong. And mm -hmm. Behan is better than Gibbs. I didn't like that. Now I, I was, I thought that they would probably be a wild card team. I thought they'd take a step forward. It looks like they're going to win that division. And that defense is actually good, not just better. That defense is actually good. So yeah. they're a really fun team. And so what I have for Goff is, um, I made I made a joke. I write out my notes. I made a, I made a joke that uh, the haters on the board should never talk about Detroit quarterbacks because too many of them hated Matt Stafford. Um, yeah. But he's a top ten quarterback in the league. He was probably a top ten last year, but he's a pocket port quarterback. You got to protect him. But he's playing big boy quarterback. Um, he's winning games. He's not shrinking under the bright lights. And he's been too good for too long, especially when you factor in that he was good in LA. And I know McVay gets a lot of that credit, but he's still out there doing it. He's had too many good seasons for us to act like he's not in the top 10. Now, the guys, the, the, the way that I look at it, from six on forward, it's superstars. And he's not a superstar guy, 
but he's a hell of a quarterback. And I'm you glad know what's that he's so styling. cool about Jared. And, you know, it, it just, I really feel for this guy because you get traded with Matt Stafford to the line. Yeah. One of the worst franchises that you could possibly go to. Yup. <laughs> and, and you say it best when you talk about quarterbacks who just don't give up or, or tank it. This guy could have easily said, oh, my God, I am in Shitsville. Why the fuck do I want to be here? And he got paid. He had that deal. He had that deal done before and, the but trade. he still came to play. He goes play, out there as if he's playing for the fucking Dallas Cowboys. Do you, you want to know how bad? Yeah. Do you want to know how bad the criticism got for him on the board? Yeah. People are – so Shane once argued, and people rallied with him on this. I wanted to fucking jump out of a window. That he knew that Goff was a bitch and not good because he paid somebody to train his dog, and people were like, "You know what? Yeah, yeah, I know it was it was insane." And so obviously he was not as good as what McVeigh made. McVeigh made him look like a top five quarterback, and he's not a top five quarterback. He's not elite, but there's too much production. And I tell you this: if the Lions, if and when they make the playoffs, and if they win a playoff game. Oh, there's going to be a lot of people who need to write apology letters to that man. Because then you can't just say, you can't just say, oh, it was McVay magic. And you can't if, just if say, the oh, it's. For whatever reason, get to the playoffs, dude, I will throw support behind them. Oh, Jesus. You want, yeah, it's not like the Browns where it's like you don't want to root for them, even though they're really bad because they're a horrible people. They're horrible people that live in a horrible city. You're like, no, yeah. like Detroit, like Detroit's struggling, but there's great people that live there. Not like in Cleveland where they're so horrible, they light their lake on fire multiple times. <laughs> like, you know, abso- absolutely, absolutely not that. So, uh, yeah, uh, I love Jared Goff, and I am biased in his favor, but seven is actually very fair. Now, yeah, since yeah. since these guys, since everyone knows who we have left, do you want to just dump your list and I'll dump my list, and then maybe if we have big disagreements, we pick it up next episode? Um, sure. Um, well, yeah, we can, we can coo- cruise. Let's just do this. The next two, we'll just cruise lightly and talk. I just have a, I'll just do six and seven real quick. Sure. Uh, I just want to point out a couple of things, and then you can yeah. agree or disagree on that. Uh, so seven, I have Jalen Hurts. Um, still uh, like him, but not as much as last year. Uh, I think he's kind of regressed a little bit. Yeah. Uh, they do have a, a great team. Like Swift is a big addition. So, I mean, they're still going to be in the hunt for the Super Bowl. There's no doubt about it. Uh, good yeah, they're the best team in the NFC out. right now, it feels like. Yeah. Uh, but there's just something that I'm not seeing this year that I saw last year. I think uh, I know what it is. I think I know what it is. Go ahead. So the mechanics have stayed good. The decision-making is a little bit off, but he's getting back in sync with the new offensive coordinator. You ever watch them play and you're like, oh, they're really good and they're really talented, but what the, what the fuck was that? Whether he yeah. missed a throw or the play calling was weird or something. That's what that is. They're ironing out the kinks on offense. Now, he had a lot of picks. Uh, he threw. He has more picks now than he did last year, but he's been pretty fucking clean the past two weeks. And I think that w- we're going to see. I'm not going to say he's not going to throw any more interceptions, but you well, and I, I mean, we like to watch it. If he's got a new OC, then at least he'll be able to grow by the time grow. he's Grow. Yeah, abso- pass, absolutely. So. And I think the thing with him is they, you know, they were, he was off. He, he said five straight games, 125 yards to A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown did nothing week one or week two. So he now he's a little a little in my opinion because I watch a lot of Philly more Philly than I want to. He's a little out of sync with Devonte just a smidge. He's not like throwing the ball over him or running the wrong route, but they're not as in sync. They're going to hit a point where they hit the ground running, and their issue on offense is just going to be like everybody else. It's going to be health now. Brown and Smith and Swift, not so much Swift. Swift does have some injury stuff, but they they're pretty healthy. And so what I think is going to happen is the next thing that they unlock is the red zone offense. Cause I don't know if you know the stat, but red zone scoring is way down this year. Yeah. I think, like I said, I was talking about earlier. I think defenses are catching up nice um, Miami. <laughs> and they're yeah, and yeah. Yeah. You just hand it to the running back and he runs a four zero flat and just leaps into the end zone <laughs> or he runs a 50 yard touchdown. So yeah. 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 Fuck, fuck the goddamn fucking red zone. I'll score from the 50. Um, <laughs> I have, I have hurts at six and, um, He's got 19, as bad as the picks and fumbles have been at certain points, he also has 19 touchdowns. So that's yeah. a lot for this time of the year. Yeah. Uh, so I think I think where you have him is pretty solid. 
Six, uh, this guy uh, deserves better all the way around. Uh, I know you agree with me. Justin A. Bear for the Chargers, he does not belong in uh, L.A. He, <laughs> he belongs on a place. team that's a contender. Uh, this team is forever, whatever cursed. reason, cursed. He's going to uh, be the new Rivers, bro. He's going to be yeah, the new Rivers. Yeah, he will probably never see a Super Bowl as long as he's in uh, L.A. And that's unfortunate. He's too good of a talent and deserves better. And he plays too, through too many injuries, bro. He's so tough. Yeah. Yeah, just really good. Uh, obviously, there's some issues. But I, don't, I think even the collapse last year, you called it. But, like, the last year, the collapse in the playoffs was more of the coaching and everything else. Staley's uh, a bad that. coach. Yeah. Staley's a bad coach. Five. This is where the shit gets real. Oh, yeah. I thought this dude would be a bust. Especially after yep. the first season or two. And Josh Allen. No. 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 We have some Tua. T -T. Oh. T, T in the house. With hey, you want to know what's crazy? I have him at 5 2. Sweet. There we go. Yeah. Great minds think alike. Think alike. If he stays healthy, he's going to be the man. Yeah. He's a little up and down. His stat sheets kind of show how how up and down he goes. But he's another small quarterback. He, now, you talk about a guy finding throwing lanes and making it work. Two is not yeah. very tall either. He, what I think what makes it work for him is there's something about the way that he plays. And I don't know how to describe it. So the analysis isn't very useful since I'm struggling to describe it. But he, he it's like he always makes the right read. And he always finds, like, the, not just, like, the guy that's open, but the right guy that's open. Like, that yeah. stuff. Like, you see him back there. He can barely see over the line, but he sees it. He's got some of that breeze stuff. You see him, like, he's, like, moving a little bit, and he finds the alley, and he just has that He just has that mind. I love it. I love this guy. I love them coming out of college. I thought that they were going to ruin him because of the bad lines and all the, the, the well, four straight the or three straight too, years. Like when you watch him, new coordinators, you watch him, yeah. like, watch how he is, his mechanics, man. Like, they're on point. He sets the yeah. feet and he gets the ball up. Now you watch some of these other quarterbacks; they're making great throws, but you can see they're throwing off the back foot, and that's like the worst thing ever. But that's because you know your quarterbacks are that confident they can get the ball there. But it really, technically, by a mechanic standpoint, that's bad. You want set your feet, boom, and there's the pass. And so that's how you want it. So he he's grown a lot. And now, granted, they got him some talent, which was important. Tyree oh, Kill and Waddle, yeah, Dude, and they got yeah. rid of the bad coaches, the bad yep. bad coaches. Look at that. Um, Stuff and McDaniel's is, get to yeah, all. absolutely. Yep. All right, so we both had him at five, right? Yep. All right. I got Allen at four. Um, okay. we know what his issues are. Some of the turnovers are silly. He's got some durability issues because he plays like Superman. But you know what's crazy? Every year we say that, and he keeps being an elite quarterback. Um, he had look. I agree. Uh, Tom Brady says that he needed to. He needs to dial back some of his stuff. Now he said it when Josh was on his podcast, so I, I respected that. This is what I will say. I'll give you a baseball analogy real quick. Barry Bonds is the best hitter, steroids aside, right? Ever, right? Tony Gwynn also one of the best pure hitters. Vladimir Guerrero one of the best pure hitters. Those two guys, the first two guys are super disciplined. Vladimir Galero would swing, and he's a career like 320 batter. He's a Hall of Famer. He'd swing at a, at a ball that's a foot off the plate, and he would hit it a lot. That's just who he was. He did not play fundamentally sound football, but right. he played Hall of Fame fucking level – or baseball. They didn't play football. What the fuck am I talking about? That's who Josh Allen is. He has to play his game. He just has to realize, okay, it's second and 17. We're on our side of the 50, and it's week four. I don't have to try to leap over three linebackers. Yeah. He doesn't have to change who he is. He has to contextualize it a little bit differently. And look, he's huge. He's super talented. He's like the updated version of Cam Newton. I can't fault the guy for being competitive and trying to do what he needs to do, but he has to keep the wear and tear off of his body. And sometimes he's got this weird thing where he doesn't think enough, right? And then he does something dumb. But then he overanalyzes too much, and then he's not being Josh Allen. There's a center point, and it's not going to be perfect. You're not going to be perfect all the time. But he – I think he's actually getting there this year because at the start of the year after that Jets game, oh, it looks so bad. It looks so bad. We're like, oh, we're going to see him fall off a cliff. 
and he he righted the ship. He has the potential to be the best quarterback in the league. I don't think he's ever going to dethrone Mahomes, but Mahomes is is more talented than Allen, but not by not by fucking leaps nah, and bounds. If he put if he put Allen on Chiefs, he'd be just as good. He'd be doing some pretty stinky things. There'd be some stank happening. Yeah. Um. And so Allen, if he didn't just lose to Zach Wilson, if he didn't just lose to um, he had that other bit, horrible loss to Mac Jones, even though he played well against the Patriots. There's something missing, but I've seen too many quarterbacks like Matt Stafford be really good for a long time before they finally break through. I think some people are trying to write this man off. That's uh, that's why I have him at four. Uh, my number four is a guy that should have been a Bronco. Um, if you're going to mortgage, if you're going to mortgage anything, you should have made this the guy you mortgage everything on. <laughs> and uh, speaking of uh, Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills, Trevor Lawrence decimated mm. him in London. Easy. Yeah, and, and so I, I really liked how uh, Trevor is coming along. There's still some work to do, but again, I have a lot of uh, the uh, potential factor here with this guy. Uh, I call him Sunshine. Uh, great in Clemson, of course, and he just seems to be doing very well. Like I just really like what they're doing. Um, can it regress and get worse? It could, but I, I think right now he's got good coaching and everything else that you need to, to kind of move along and grow. So it's a matter of how much can they put together? Can they make a nice run in the playoffs like they did last year? If you if they get to the playoffs two years in a row, that's like a great first for them. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, their expectations are going to be really high because that yeah. division's not very good. This is the second season he has Peterson. Right. I think that what I think that my the issue that I have with Lawrence is. I, when I watch him play, I just see him. There are certain things, certain throws that are there that he's not hitting. I don't know if he's being too cautious. Um, he, he has such great weapons. Yeah. Etienne out of the backfield, Ingram, Kirk. Um, Ridley's been a little bit up and down, but he's definitely still a pretty, pretty dang good, good wide receiver. There's a level that they need to hit. And quite frankly, I don't. I think that you. This is probably the first one that we disagree on heavily. Um, probably, but I don't. I don't hate it. I don't hate it because from a talent perspective, he's super gifted. Yeah. Do we have both have Mahomes at one? I'm just curious. Yes. Do we both have or, Burrow at two? No. Oh, you do not. Okay. I do not. Uh, we have it too for certain reasons. Okay. Oh. So. Um. So yeah, number three, uh, his QBR is horrid, horrid. But if I took this quarterback and put him on the Chiefs, the Broncos, the Buffalo Bills, the Dallas Cowboys, the Niners, he would be an All Star, and that's Joe Burrow. It's not yeah. that he doesn't. It does not that he doesn't have talent there. We have he has a great, you know, Jamar Chase, uh, Tyler Boyd. The problem Higgins. is Higgins. Yeah. yeah. So the problem is. Something else is missing, whether it's a, a a good running back better than Dixon. Dixon does okay, but he's off and on. Uh, I, I think that the coach himself is kind of like jumped a shark a little bit here. He uh, is resoundingly – at Zach Taylor is not a difference maker behind the sidelines. Yeah. And I, I would think agree with that, that. You know, it's like these, these very slow starts. And now, granted – some the injuries, yeah, right. yeah, and it plays a huge factor into that. But man, from a talent perspective, I still love Burrow a lot. Uh, I would almost put him at two if it wasn't just for all this other crap that's going on because some of it's his own fault, like some of the stuff that he's doing. Um, but at two, Josh Allen, I still have him there, uh, talent wise, yeah. it's just too hard to shake off. He has, like, I think technically the best QBR of all the quarterbacks in the NFL right now. But you kind of touched on it a little bit is Josh tries to do too much. And yeah. so there's, there's a sense of like a lack of a clutch factor. So uh, hey, real quick, I, I'm sorry. I, Cause I got the Steelers right. game going. Yeah. TJ Watt was held. He had his helmet ripped off and he still got a red zone sack penalty declined. Nice. Yep. Oh. Best best defensive player in football. Stop debating it. Sorry. <laughs> Not you. I'm just I'm just talking to some people Not who you. need the education. Not right. you, but you. Not you, but you. 
<laughs> I love everything that you just said, and I disagree with it. But here's the thing. Joe Burrow, last year he got off to the slow start. His appendix bro- burst, right? And he was rusty. This year, it's obviously the leg stuff. So you can make that thing for him. You can also talk about, well, Josh Allen um, and Joe Burrow are going to play soon. So that will be that will be really cool. I think that's next week or the week after. Um, yeah. Josh Allen should have gone. Should they should have beaten that the, the Chiefs, right? But for that thirteen seconds, you could have argued that the Bengals should have beat the Chiefs last year. I don't think they well, should have because the penalty man. was horrible. Their de- yeah, their defense and the Chiefs ended up winning the Super Bowl, I so it's hard to make it. I was going to win that game, dude. I know, so and good, then man. and and then Patrick Mahomes pulled out his his fucking his, his the rabbit Bigger out of the fucking hat. The yeah, hat. yeah, he did. He, he that's why he's the goat, but. But here, here's the thing with 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 what you're saying, and where I can't tell you that you're wrong. Diggs is a top five wideout. Diggs is going to the Hall of Fame. Jamar Chase is not doesn't have that track record yet, but he's a top three wide receiver. I think he's the best wide receiver in football if you factor in playoffs, because he's a madman in the playoffs. He's a fucking madman. But Jamar Chase, if you want to tell me that. AJ Brown has surpassed him because he's going crazy and Tyreek is the best and Justin Jefferson. I don't disagree. I don't agree with that. Well, but, like, that's is, not, uh, but that's anyway, I don't want to delve too center. deep into it. But those are that's the caliber of guys that he has, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. so the only guy that I think is better than him maybe is Justin Jefferson and Tyreek Hill. And yeah. so I have Chase at three slash two mm-hmm. because those guys haven't done anything the postseason in a while, although Hill does have that ring. Right, but Josh doesn't have T. Higgins at two. He has Gabriel Davis, who's a pure deep threat, and he's off and on. We've talked about James Cook is a pretty good running back, but he hasn't hit the production that Mixon has because Mixon's he's not he's running the ball pretty decently this year, oh, but yeah, he's catching Mixon, a lot of passes. <laughs> Dix, I thought you were just being funny because he's kind of a because he's, well, he's got sure. a he's got yeah 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 of course you were of course you were right but. He Burrow has the better weapons. Neither of them have good lines. Now the, the Burrow's in the Bengals' defense, they just Orlando Brown, Lyle Collins, two other they, they draft guys. They they've had like four free agent offensive line signings in like the past two years. They spent money on the line, it just hasn't helped. Josh Allen, you could argue, does as much with a little bit less than Joe well, Burrow. I mean, personally, if I'm a coach and I'm building a franchise, I mean, Joe Burrow's my guy. Like, And it's and people are going to hate me saying this, but I would take him over my homes. But mm. you have to make sure that you're protecting this guy. Like, you know, that's the thing. Like, yeah. Joe, is, Joe is like you're probably one of your better pure pocket passers. And I really yeah, he's, he's the best. He's the best pure pocket passer. And he has yeah. enough athleticism to keep defenses honest. The reason why I have him at two is because – he just killed the Niners. He just killed them. And I know the defense isn't as good as last year. And Joey Bosa has two and a half – or Nick Bosa, whichever Bosa. They're the same fucking guy, the same personality. Same guy. He, that, guy has, that guy has two and a half fucking sacks. So he's been a huge disappointment. And right. that de- they, they missed their defensive coordinator. I think they, have, they lost a couple of guys in free agency too. But they should be a really good unit. He, he came off the bye. His leg is healthy. And he just showed, hey, I'm the best pure passer in football. Just the best pure passer in football. Joe Burrow beat them so bad they just traded for Chase Young. He beat them so bad Dude, they traded a. Thir- already, fuck! I've been so wait. The the Bengals have Chase Young now. N- no, the Niners traded for Chase Young. They gave up oh, a third. Dude, that's yeah. Insane. Yeah, they gave up a third to get Chase Young because the, they could not get to Joe Burrow, and it wasn't because the Bengals line was playing particularly well with Joe Burrow. I would bet on him to beat almost everybody except Mahomes. That's the easiest way to put it. Um, and Mahomes is the is a much better player, but in a single game, I'm not saying that he's not. Mahomes is one of the clutchest quarterbacks ever. Like the stats do not do not lie. But Joe Burrow is too. And the other thing with Joe Burrow is he is one of the best deep ball passers I've seen in a long time. And Mahomes is really good too. But I'm watching – I remember watching Joe Burrow go out there, and I know I'm cheating because I'm going off of past seasons maybe a little too much. He was the most accurate passer for balls over 25 yards plus, playing with the worst pass-blocking line in football. 
that is an insane stat that will never fucking or one of the worst. I don't know if they're absolutely the worst. Um, well, it's so funny but, because you know Burrow with his QBR right now, he's playing worse than a majority of these guys. He's yeah, he <laughs> but, he, you know, he should have no, stayed on the bench. No logical reason why you no. have him ranked lower than where he is. No, you you can't. Another thing is that he also played hurt, and QBR <laughs> right. cannot account for injuries. <laughs> right. Like, and he willed them to win that against the Rams with the backup quarterback. They lose that game, and their season's on life support. Right. You know, and so. And they almost beat the fucking Ravens too. And he played through the injury that week. So I think Joe Burrow is the second best quarterback because he makes fewer mistakes than Allen. Although Burrow will throw some aggressive interceptions too. So I'm not saying that he's per- – because Joe Burrow, he, he's like, ah, sometimes he's got that fuck it, chases down there somewhere. He's, he's got that too. He, but he'll also throw his boys open and let him go make a play. Sometimes his picks come from a contested catch. So I I love him. I just wish he wasn't a fucking filthy bangle. But you know, he's a stud. And then I thought for sure he'd be the reason you'd go back to being a bangle. Uh, I I can't, man. I I can't. can't be it's, it's, it, it's too it's too many personal reasons for a for a public stream, but mm-hmm. I can't. I won't. Well, I almost became a Chiefs one. fan. It was I almost became a Chiefs fan, bro. Uh no, the I'm year yeah, because it was the year I thought about it, and that was the last year of Alex Smith. So that would have been a good one to hop on. And now no, my team I, has no. You and I would never be friends if that were the case. I don't. Be, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. <laughs> or, or, I'd be. I would. I would be asking you about like those seventeen games. But hey, you broke the streak, so that's pretty good. You're right. We got my. We got Mahomes at number one. Do we want to? Do we want to sing his praises about how well he's doing, even though he doesn't have anything to throw to other than Kelsey? And yeah, you know, I mean, look, uh, he, he came out of nowhere. I didn't know anything about him when I when he first came into the league. Like, I thought, oh, Chiefs reach for some dude. That's great. Yeah. Shame Oops. on me for not doing my homework. But, you know, the reality is he uh, – <sighs> He rock a curly mullet. That's yes, he sure. can. Although I did, I, did enjoy, I did enjoy that Travis Kelsey was on his podcast with his brother. He was all salty about uh, Broncos beating him. So that that was fun. He was, and he called out. He called. He said, "We have to do better." And he called himself out. I will. Yeah. I will tell you. I will tell you this, um, Patrick Mahomes. If you just do goat based off of a little bit winning and playing quarterback at the highest level, he's the goat. If you do goat based off of other things, he has to fill in the resume. But he is a Hall of Fame quarterback already. Um, he is learning. Last year, he showed it. He's playing big boy quarterback. He understands the system and whatnot. He's getting better. And he's going – if he keeps up like this, he's going to be able to extend his career because he won't be as – he's never been like, a, I'm going to run the ball like eight, ten times a game. But he does do a lot of that shifty shit in the pocket and you can get banged up. So, man, um, I love Patrick Mahomes. Third in passing yards with only one reliable target. Fifth in touchdowns, almost 69% completion percentage. I think it dipped down a little bit because of, because of the game last week. He's just – he's an all-time talent. <laughs> and he Damn fell, and he and, and and the Bears could have had him. Thank God the Bears took Trubisky over him. They would have ruined him. They would have ruined him. Yeah, you know, uh, it, it was funny because really the only Achilles heel that he had for a long time was Tom Brady. <laughs> but yeah, once Brady, but once Brady retired, it was the throne was his. So now it's it, like, it was. I wish that Super Bowl happened when he when he didn't have the busted ankle and the three offensive linemen out. But you know what? Tom Brady wishes that Wes Welker didn't drop those two passes. So it oh is what God, it is. Yeah. It is what then it he's is. got then he's got nine Super Bowls. Now he's yeah, the greatest I mean, basketball it's, player of all time somehow. It's insane stuff, man. But I know. I know. But then if Vinatieri wasn't a clutch kicker, then he has six. It, you start it gets it gets wonky. Yeah. It gets it gets wonky. Brady could have as realistically as few as three and as many as and realistically as many as nine. So it's just, it's just, it's gross, man. It's gross. But uh, we had a good list. We've been going for almost three hours. I think we're going to do this at the end of the season again, yeah. like at the at post Super Bowl. And uh, we're going to keep coming up with some other uh, NFL off season. Ep- <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Here's my, I have my list. It's right here. <laughs> well, we made all those picks. I'm like, I don't remember half of the ones I said. I mean, sure, I uh, thought Denver would win their division. And you don't want to go back and watch the show all over again. I right. save mine to Google Docs is what I do. But then sometimes I forget that I want to save them and I delete them. Right. Um, 
it was a great show. This is a, this is a really fun one to do. Yeah, man. Thanks for joining me. Uh, hey, thanks for having me. Great idea. Uh, you got anything coming up at all, or just? Chilling? Uh, I got some stuff that I don't want to announce quite yet, but I got some stuff I'm really excited about, and uh, something I got some brewing, and ain't, and ain't in a witch's cauldron. <laughs> Uh, tomorrow for those that are interested, uh, tomorrow morning after probably 12 noon, uh, Neko and I will be interviewing Thrash Pondo Ponds, doing one of our random celebrity YouTube, uh, interviews. So it'd be fun talking to him after that. Uh, I have to kind of like look at my schedule and stuff. I know that Poe and I will probably try to get back, uh, next time with another Poetic Carnage when we can, but, uh. We have not had a good luck doing this every week like we kind of planned. I had some yeah. stuff, some personal stuff going on. We're we're doing our best, folks. Yeah, but you know, at least when we bring we bring the heat, we bring we the bring heat. the heat. And uh, and let's be fair too to us. Our postseason coverage is fire. So yeah. that that's I think and that's we where we got great, our most views. We had a great live draft. That was fun. Oh yeah, that's a tradition. That that yeah. that'll happen for years to come. So we 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 do this as it's a as a project of love. So we do the best we can. And I think honestly, the way that our schedules are shaking out, I bet you for the, maybe in a couple, maybe by the end of this month, we'll be back to being able to hit them more consistently. Um, and yep. so I look forward to that. Start to shake up a little bit. You'll start seeing some. Of the yeah. And... Abs- absolutely. Absolutely. Well, fans, we love you. This is the hardest man working man on the internet. At least who, who does not work on a website that ends in XXX or tube so or hub so watch his stuff enjoy his stuff like follow share all that shit smash subscribe and if you don't i'm not just going to date your mother i'm going to marry her i will be your new father yeah you don't want i am your daddy i am i believe in discipline through the belt oh shit i will be your daddy Thank you, everyone. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. If you got any comments about our list, want to make any of your own comments, feel free to drop them down and let us know good or bad. Absolutely. About it. And uh, we'll see you next time here on the Poetic Carnage Show. Absolutely. Absolutely.